Hello, hello. Happy, 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 happy Sunday, everybody. What's up, up? Two hands. Who else has a stream open so they don't forget to check when it starts? Me. <laughs> yeah, I had to do that too. Franklin Lewis asks, question, Timmy is new M18 Hellcat. Uh, will we be seeing this on your workbench when released? Nope, is the answer to that. I never do anything first. Uh, and I never grab a new kit because it never fits my schedule. But I will do a Hellcat at some point in time. It's not a big deal. Um, there's plenty of green stuff in my, in my stash to keep you guys occupied for a minute. Uh, what else we got? Uh, let's see. Arnell Flander, Flandes says, Happy Sunday, fun day, Mike and all. Yep, football day. Panzer Dan, I've definitely got a Hellcat and he's got a pre-order up. Uh, yep. Um, yeah, I probably, I don't, I don't ever grab uh, new kits anymore. It's not, it's not my, it's not my jam. <laughs> Cause I'm just going to get beat by the dude that's already got one. He's already building it. So doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Being first doesn't mean anything with this. Uh, definitely. And let's see what else we got. Dennis says, hello, my stream is up and running. Good to all, good day to all. And to Mike, it's a beautiful day in Michigan. Yeah, it is a, another beautiful fall day to FS and Zal. Hello. Hello. John says, what's up guys? Focus. Hey everyone. Hope the day has treated everyone well so far. Um, oh, this thing keeps jumping on me. It's weird. Uh, let's see. What's up? I'm going to scroll back up. Uh, Mike says, good afternoon. How you doing, bud? Hopefully your, your shift is going well. Sal says iPhone 13 stream. Yep. And then uh, Cat Loafer says hello. Hello to you, Cat. And then Sylvain. Hello, John. Hello, Sal. Hello, everyone. Michael. Hello. Nog in the nog. Good morning. All the posse from paradise in the South Pacific. Indeed it is. The model guy taps on the, the love button there. Yep. It's kind of what it does. But it's not a race, you know, that's the thing too, is it's the, the, in far as what I do, what RSP does and everything, that's never been part of the program. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm 30 kids behind in the last two years alone. So that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, I'm happy to me is still doing armor. I mean, that means, that means the, the company's still doing something, but, um, I did get some new kits and they both were to me kits, um, and they're new to me, um, but they're already a couple years old. So it doesn't really mean anything. We'll talk about them soon though. Pete Tui, reporting in, brother. How are you? Good to see you. Drew, Drew Wheeler says, hey, what's up? Looking forward to today. Um, let's see what else we got. Bill Moore, what's up? How are you, Bill? Tennessee, right, Bill? Jeffrey Mosley, good day, all. How are you? Uh, let's see. Robert Tyall, Garrett. How's everybody doing? Joe Cass. Uh, got to talk loud. <laughs> Go, go, go Giants, Cowboys run. Yep. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah. Actually, my teams, all my teams won so far this weekend, which is good. Uh, college football, baseball, and pro football. So I'm in I'm in much better spot than I was last weekend, where I just got decimated. So this weekend's been a decent weekend. Uh, that Bama game last night, though. How about them guys? Boy, A&M. That came out of nowhere. Uh, MSN Scale Models. Hello, how are you? I'm really needing this stream 13 and a half in <laughs> three and a half to go. Well, we'll wrap up the last three and a half hours of your shift today, uh, Mike. Then no problem. We've got that part covered. Uh, yep, John Brown's in charge on screen. Yeah, I had to mute my red zone in the other room. Got to turn it off. I have to, I have to, I have to be a, a professional and, and not keep the football going. Um, season's getting good though. I was, um, I'm happy with the parody, and we're seeing some parody in college too, which is kind of good. I think it was good for the sport that that Bama lost yesterday too, and that was the. There's some interesting stats on that game, too. That was the first time uh, Nick Saban, one of his assistants, had actually ever beaten him, I think, head-to-head. -head. And I also think there was that other stat. Is it's the, the first loss of 100 games against unranked opponents, which is pretty impressive. I mean, they're a massive, they're a massive crazy team. So, I mean, props to Nick and, and the boys. But, yeah, it's good for the sport that they dropped out. I think they're fifth right now. I think they got dropped to rank five, which I thought was harsh. Truth be told is I don't think Bama's a fifth-ranked team in the nation. I still would want to play them. They're still probably this top two or three team in the country, to be honest with you. That Sooners game, dude, that was one of the best football games in a long time, my friend. The Red River Showdown. That was an outstanding football game. Like you couldn't, but that's Big 12. There's no defense. You can't turn around for like three seconds. I'd leave the room and then like four scores would happen. I'm like, what the fuck? 
Uh, you have the Kraken starting there too, season, don't you? Uh, still going through puck withdrawal. Oh yeah, hockey's on. Yeah, that's probably the one. <laughs> MLS and hockey are like the two, NHL are like the two I like almost never follow. So I apologize to those fans. No offense. I just there's so much other stuff. Uh, Focus says thanks again for the t- uh, airbrush tip. Uh, went from disaster. Okay, sweet. Did that actually work? And and did you continue on with that brand? I mean, you didn't switch paints, did you? <laughs> Uh, Popo's out there. Uh, Say Nova says hello. How are you? It's a busy day here in Portland. Yep, leaves are turning. Uh, it is cold. I'm wearing it's sweater weather weather already. I've got the heaters on in the house in the morning and everything. So that's that's new. We went from record hot summer uh, melting to right back in the cold. Yeah, I think the BCS. I think I think both both sides of football will be will be uh, an interesting season. Uh, Formula One was on this morning too. Anybody watch uh, Turkey Grand Prix? <laughs> that's good focus. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad you got that sorted out though. That's usually what it is. And I and I, and I have promised an airbrushing stuff here, and, and I've been kind of holding off until um, this might be the last one or two streams with these devices on camera uh, that we've got today. There'll be some new stuff coming in. I've got a bunch. I actually spent most of yesterday cleaning up the studio and getting ready for the next round of stuff. I have to. I'm one of those guys that I have to reset my bench and everything to kind of reset everything and then kind of come back in. And, and right now it's all super clean. The other side of the bench is super cleaned off finally. Uh, any early early questions? Did I miss anything? I don't think I see other than the Tamiya Hellcat. Um, yeah, I will do one. I mean, I do like kids. Don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't like the Hellcat. It's just it's me being first out of the gate or, you know, dropping on stream right away. That's not, that's not what I do. Uh, am I a trailblazer? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Blazer fan. Um, being from Los Angeles, you know, there's eight to nine sports teams, whatever, down there for all the various sports that we have. And uh, moving to Portland about a, a little a little under a decade, nine years now. Um, this is a, you know, outside of the, the, the Timbers, you know, soccer fan, but in, in, the, in the big three of the sports, you know, basketball, baseball, football. Um, it's a one sport town. So everybody here's a, you know, more or less everybody here's a Blazer fan, which that's a unique experience. And I really enjoyed it. And it's a nice stadium and it's a nice facility and um, everything. It's all really cool about that. And it's very different to Los Angeles and in big cities like that. So I do appreciate it. And in a couple of years, it, it did take. Plus the other side, I'm going to just be honest. I'm not, a, I mean, I, I like him. I appreciate what he is, but I'm not a LeBron James fan <laughs> being a Laker guy. And I'm not a Clipper guy. So I'm LA, I'm not Orange County. Um, yeah, it's 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 we're just one of those. I've, I've never. I mean, I went through Magic Johnson era, so it's to me. I like the the kind of like Dame's attitude towards Portland, and you know, he's a long time Blazer. He signed a contract. He's not going to jump ship and all that crap. So, I'm a fan. They're a good team too. They're fun to watch. Um, Aston Martin made a made a bad decision. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't think that was a big deal because Vettel was already in like 14th or 15th place, and it was just you know roll the dice and see what happens on the tires. You know. I was surprised they didn't pick the soft tire, but you know, we, we kind of, the, the crossover time time of uh, the lap time wasn't there for, for slicks anyway. Uh, sail GP was better if you like fast sailboats. <laughs> I like sailboats technically. I don't ever know anything about them, um, John Clark, so it is pretty cool. I, I used to, I mean, living in Long Beach, we were, you know, you, you kind of, there were some yacht races and some offshore racing in Long Beach, California quite a bit too. Um, but yeah. Uh, Mikel Perez, hello. I I did see the F1. Good race for Red Bull today. Yep, I think both number two drivers drove well today. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Ak Ak Bazan. I'm just gonna say Ak Ak Bazan. I hope I said that right. Hello, how are you? Welcome. I can't say your last name there. Uh, John says, yeah, you got chilly New York, uh, New England too. Uh, I think we're gonna get smacked hard this winter. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a cold winter in the states. Hot summer, cold winter. Reggie Miller. Yeah, there's a name. Wow, there's like four, there's something big going down. There's a lot of sirens going on. I'm sure Officer Mike can uh, glue it. <laughs> Shit's going down, boys. Uh, Paul Dato says, hey, what's up? Question, the modern takes 62 and 72. What are the primers in red? Yes, red primer. Most things are red primer. There's very few not red primer. Um, the US allied lacquer gray primers in World War II, an example. Most modern post-war stuff, machinery, almost all of it is gonna be a red primer. Uh, and you'd have to find real hard evidence that it's not. There's some there's some c- cockpit stuff, aircraft stuff that's different, but if we're talking steel ground vehicles, almost everything is a red primer, um, industrial red primer. If it's manufactured post-19, post the war, it's, it's almost all red primer. Russia, US, Allied, NATO stuff, everybody. 
um, even even Israeli and stuff like that. There's some there's some cool photos years ago. Uh, I think Ruben Gonzalez did a Merc one, Merkava one. Um, but there's a there's a cool and, and then National Geographic did some stuff in the 80s with the when the Israeli Merkava one came out. And there's a lot of factory photos and they're all in red as well. So yeah, it's pretty much you're safe with red primer. It's rare that you're going to do a red primer and it'd be wrong. Um, so yeah. Um, Let's see here, what else we got? So Darren says, hello Darren, what's up? Paul Moser finally sat down with the King Art Brush is such a better point to them than anything else I've tried. Starting to understand how your precision approach is possible. Ah, oh, great Paul, that's good. Uh, yeah, I've talked to King Art. Um, number two brushes are back in stock, guys. Links are in the description down below. Um, and they're gonna be in stock for a while because they, they they told me they've up production on the number two Ultra Rounds, which is the main brush of the conversation. Um, where's my dude right here? Where are we at? 140, and we'll go a few more ones with these little dudes here. They say max round on the handle. I think on the website it says ultra round. Uh, I'm not I'm not 100% sure, but it's the 9020s. Uh, again, the names and links are in the description down below and in, in, under the video here. So they were back in stock, so you guys, you guys have can go at it. You buy as many as you need. Uh, and I think the I think the one eighths in the in the quarters, um, the other ones, the rakes and the flats that I showcased too. Everything that's in the description they've restocked on. These two guys here. Yeah, I'll I'll go big screen in a second. We'll go back over it when we just get into that. Uh, what else we got? All the sirens, <laughs> right? Is that, is that my is that my VIP treatment? <laughs> They're nice to me though. Cause I'm, 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 I've got the shaved head and everything. I kind of look like one of them <laughs> a little bit, you know, all the cops have shaved heads. So they, they like me. I wave, I'm like, hey, <laughs> always be nice to the popo. And they like my old car too. They always like my old cars on driver. Um, yeah, we'll switch here in a sec. We'll, we'll swap, we'll swap cameras here in a second, but just want to get through the hellos. Eric Daglish, hello. Been a while since I've been able to join the live feed. Looking forward to this one. Sweet. Yep, well, we're gonna kind of go through part two from last uh, stream. Uh, we're going to use mostly the same things, but we're going to go kind of next level and then maybe the next steps in some of them. Like I cut this one off a little bit short uh, to move on. So we'll go back through and we'll do some layering on top of it and some other stuff. Uh, let's see, Drew really able to watch a stream on screen bigger than my phone. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. Yeah, by the way, guys, um, if you're th watching through YouTube, like on a desktop or um, a device that has it, I believe there's a, there's a there's a rectangle that's kind of thin and wide. It just shows an icon. If you click it, it's called theater mode. It'll move the chat below and it makes the windows bigger. So I don't know if you've seen that before, but that's another feature of YouTube that they have. And also click your 1080p, um, cause that's what this feed goes out at. And, and sometimes you have to reset. It's a little gear, click the gear on the screen below, right, right, right there. <laughs> down there somewhere should be right down in there somewhere there's a little gear click that and then select 1080p and that'll that'll sharpen it it does make a difference even from 720. Uh, most devices can handle it um, yeah and the king art does have sales constantly i think right now is a 40 percent coupon uh, they do a bunch of stuff for so in the art world <coughs> excuse me in general called uh, october is always inktober month and that's where all the artists draw in pen black pen usually called inktober uh, and then most of the art companies all do sales around their pens and stuff like that. So it looks like they're running a 40% sale for Inktober. Ah, let's see what else we got. Uh, Focus asks, question, tip um, on the faded paint technique versus chip paint. Which book? I'll look it up. All of them? <laughs> faded, faded paint versus... I think you're thinking SM2. I think you, are you talking like the Windex thing with the, with the ammonia rubbing off the, the, the top layers? Uh, Jason, I, that might be what you're talking about. It's also in Tank R3 a little bit, touched on a little bit. Uh, resolution much sharper. Yep, thank you, Paul. You're welcome, Paul. Uh, Patriots win barely. Yeah, that was that was a good comeback though. Not that the Titans are tough, but it was still a, it's a good win for the Pats. Um, because the Bucks look pretty crazy today. <laughs> Brady just chucking it everywhere. Uh, my Steelers won, so that was that makes me a little happy. Uh, what else we got? Any other questions, my friends? What else are we happen in here? Everybody having a good day? It is it is nice. October's good. October's always a really good month. Coming into the holidays, um, let's see, printing wise, book wise, cut, catch you guys up on that. I haven't sent a newsletter out simply because I wanna um, I wanna make sure that the dates I get from them uh, hold. Yeah, um, yeah, Jason, those are the SM2 and Tank R3, mostly SM2. 
the tractor book, which is printing right now, or the reprint. Uh, so yeah, so Tank Art 1, SM2, and SM3 are on press as we speak. They'll be ready in a couple weeks, meaning, and then they'll ship to us by the end of October, which means all those will go out the first part of November, realistically. Um, and then everybody will get them like a week to two weeks, depending on how long that goes. Right as that transitions out, Tank Art 2 and SM4 pop up on press, and that means they'll be ready towards the middle to late November, and then they'll ship early December. And then as that finishes up, the technique guides start to go up, um, and that's where the paper shortages happen. We had to stop that process and that's why it pushed back the tg books got pushed back like another month which you know it is what it is um that's brexit U eu stuff um supply chain problems out of my hands you know i've, I've paid my money i paid my dues we're caught up we're not nothing i'm doing is holding me up or holding rsp up so that's the latest uh, sm5 and 6 will probably be printing in middle to late december which is christmas which means you're screwed for for delivery before christmas but we think all the other books will be delivered before christmas we're pretty sure so, and I'll update the pre-order guys probably in a couple weeks, towards the middle of late October in terms of an actual newsletter. And that's simply because the, the dates are changing constantly. Everything's changing. The UK, the gas shortage and all that stuff and everything has, has pushed a lot of stuff back. The boats in the harbors. So I had a big conversation about that with multiple people. If you're not aware, a lot of the major shipping harbors have a backlog of boats that are anchored out offshore that they can't unload their cargo. The problem that's, that's creating for bulk shipments like ours when we ship books between the two continents is we can now, we can no longer at this, as of today, I can't book out when I can put books on a boat and then get it to us and then a reasonable time frame. So we're gonna try to do just direct DHL shipments to everybody, all their individual stuff. We're gonna bypass the routine of shipping from the EU to the US and just ship straight out of Europe to everybody. Um, just direct shipments and see how it goes. It's the only real option I have, <laughs> It kinda sucks. Uh, airplanes are, <laughs> airplanes are, uh, you know, nobody can get on the planes. There's not enough aircraft to, to cover the, the overflow because this is affecting everything. This is not a, a RSP problem. Um, and, and the other problem what's happened, or the, the secondary problem that's going to be a big problem for everybody, all the stores, just so you guys are aware, the boats are in the wrong locations now because they've been stuck in these harbors for, for weeks to months, some of them. Uh, there's enough cargo ships to handle the loads, but they're in the wrong spots, which is a big deal because like if they unload in Los Angeles, and the load's not ready to go on because it's taken them two months so people have moved all the stuff around that boat that has to go service somebody else isn't in the right spot to get it's a whole mess so figure six months of shipping hell for everybody just to be truthful i can't afford aircraft shipping the bulk prices are crazy so but anywho anywho that updates all that um and like i said we'll do a newsletter pretty soon on that one uh zal says king archie called the number two the rinaldi <laughs> yeah uh, let's see. Question. Nog in the nod. Notice the uh, Renault FT. That's an old one. Uh, can you load some of the pics? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. No worries, man. I'd be happy to. Yeah, Patreon. I'm um, still a little bit behind on Patreon, but we have, uh, I have kind of been able to um, do some love for that. So the Patreon guys, a couple things they're getting. They have their own series of videos. Uh, we got five of them done. Uh, they've been up there for a while now. Uh, I didn't get my new one done this week. I wanted to. Uh, the phone shift happened. Uh, I got the 13 uh, the day before yesterday. Um, working on the new videos for Patreon, and then the Patreon guys will get high resolution images. A lot of times when we post on social media, they're little shit JPEGs. But so that right now the Patreon dudes get some high res stuff so they can zoom in, check it out. So that's what we're doing for that. Um, so I appreciate the, all that support. Links for all that are in the description down below. Hit the like button, please, to help the algorithms and all that fun stuff. Um, no airplane love, not yet, Wayne. Yeah, we're we're getting to. Um, as far as scale models goes, I, I have picked the three kits out. Um, and in fact, I will actually let the Patreon guys decide which ones they want and then which ones will come to the, to the stream. And I haven't, just haven't set that up yet. Um, let's see what else. A mediocre middle age. Hey, what's up, buddy? I'm trying to multitask with work today. You got it. We'll do our best to multitask. Finally made a live one, Andrew. Welcome. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Uh, John Clark. So uh, King Art is um, not in the stores in the UK or you, but they do ship overseas from the US and the prices are reasonable because it's fairly lightweight packages. If you're just buying brushes, the shipping is quite reasonable from my understanding that you can get probably up to like 10, and don't quote me, but somewhere around 10 brushes for about 20 US dollars shipped to you, somewhere in that ballpark. What's up, Sacrament, how are you? Panzer Dan says, ultra 12K picture, I can see the, pro the pores in the plastic, yeah. Um, so I will shift over, we'll talk about the camera. Um, yeah, it, the SMO6 book, so what I'm doing, what I decided to do, because it's just the, the way things are, are just progressing, if you will, is 
I'm going to try to time 05 and 06 to be released equally or at the same time. And then that way they're kind of a compilation volume. You can get them separately, of course, but they kind of work together at the same time. And then, um, you know, do a couple little extra stuff with the air. Because that's the last of the pre order So by, by the time we get to SM5 in terms of the printing, I'm pretty much caught up on most of the stuff, which is great. It'll be a, kind of a nice reprieve a bit. Um, that's good, Sacrament. That's good. That's what I want to hear. Everybody's doing well. Uh, you're welcome, Mike. No problem. Yeah, we'll get you all that stuff. And yeah, if, all my Patreons and stream and stuff like that, any any of those kind of requests, you're happy to, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to oblige. I can handle most of the crafts. So Panzer Dan says, $3 for free shipping at King Art. Uh, that's a US only. I believe that's a domestic shipment. Um, I'm not sure it counts for international. So I know the King Art orders um, are over $30 free shipping inside the US, I believe. So don't, I, I don't think that holds for internet. And I would be surprised because I know the prices going overseas are, are considerably higher than the domestic prices for us. Same problem, we have the same problem for us. That's why we've located everything in the Germany and now with COVID and everything else, it's kind of <laughs> backfire. Oh, uh, well. Uh, but anywho, let's see what else. I think that's, that's the major info stories. Everybody good, let's switch cameras, get my mug off stream. So I'm just gonna show you. So the, so the 13 has three lenses versus two. So here's, here's the zoomy zoom. The problem is I can get super close, but with the camera app, and this is what I was talking to my Patreon guys yesterday, uh, Bonsoir, uh, Fan Carello, the iPhone 13 can do the zoom. The webcam app inside the phone cannot. So there's this, there's this view, there's this view. These are our two standard ones from before, and then I have to do that still. Although this lens is superior, so you're gonna, you'll get a slightly sharper image. I, I'm not able to do my full blown, I can't zoom in any further than this without uh, moving the camera in closer. And there is also uh, a fantastic macro mode on the iPhone 13 that is probably not good for live streaming, but it's good, for, you can do a video mode and macro mode, so you can do some cool close-ups and stuff. Um, pretty neat. Uh, it's, it's, it's impressive, kind of the, the level of detail. I, I think you can see the texture on the, on the pigments looking at the screen right now from what I see up on the desktop that image does look a little bit better you can really see the the, the graining or the grain of the pigments in there so at 1080p that should be fairly sure so here's the here's the thing that we've also learned here or a couple of things that I'm that I'm in the long-term process but I don't know when it will happen so YouTube only handles 1080p all the phones can now shoot 4k Vimeo handles 4k so the problem is it's a whole nother payment process for me. <laughs> so I've just said, okay, fine, I'll do it later. But just so you know, I don't think YouTube's gonna go 4K anytime in the really near future, but that's kind of what we're waiting for. So what we need is the hardware is in place now, which I think we're really good. It's just the other stuff isn't. For streaming, um, there's for regular video, you can, you can still do some fun stuff, but for now for streaming. Yeah, bundle your orders together in groups, guys. You know, work together if you need to do some shipping overseas. But yeah, anyway, I would say realistically from a King Art order, um, because even if you ordered, you know, their oil paints and their pencils um, and the brushes, it's still a fairly lightweight order. Um, it doesn't add up to that much of a, of a heavy shipment, so. Okay, let me get myself set up here. So today what we're gonna do is continue on with the dust conversation. Uh, I've got the, the the red rail stock, the Burlington here. Again, this was not trying to be accurate to the, to the prototypes or anything like that. I was just showing you uh, pure technique on this. What I'll do today is we'll come in and we'll start to do a little bit of love with this and then I'll do a little bit over here in, in a slightly different style. So you can see that. And then we've got the T34 will probably be the main one for today. And I do have the extra, uh, this, this turret as well. And I think what we'll do is we'll probably do what we did last time where we finished with the watercolor pencils at the end of it. And we'll keep playing with those a little bit. So that'll be kind of what, what I'm going to be doing for you guys today. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, those of you new to stream, anybody out there new to stream and want to ask a question, please type in the word question ahead of your thing. So when I pop my head up, I can I can I see the word question and I, I try to grab it. Um, and I don't know if TJ is around, but I know TJ was doing some. I know Drew, you wanted some oil. We'll do when we get to the the oils. We'll start with pigments again, and then um, get some tape. Um, what we'll do is we'll do pigments. We'll do the same kind of basic process. Do some pigments, uh, show you some kind of staining and stuff with the oils on top of the pigments. And then I'll do some of the dust work just purely with the oils as well. So we'll do both, same kind of the same as last time. Same, same, but different. 
that what the kids say? And who won the Green Bay Cincinnati game? I had to turn that off because it was like the third or fourth missed field goal. <laughs> that you don't see very often, by the way. Nathan Crosby never misses, and he missed what, three or four in a row today. Uh, Drew Wheeler says, I picked up one of the King Art organizers too. Pretty solid for, yeah, for like, what is it, like two bucks? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that's good stuff. But I did have a conversation with him, so that was nice. Um, so we're, we're in contact. That just a bump out of the way. You get back. I'm trying to reach this, trying to get this. So I did put the oil pal. Uh, so I know some of you guys were talking about that. I think uh, we've had this discussion a few times. Uh, I put this in the fridge for the week. Uh, seemed I tested it this morning and it seemed to be holding up pretty good so far. So that definitely does work, John Fosey, on, the, um, on that tip on putting your oils in the refrigerator. Now he transfers to a piece of glass. I did it uh, going into overtime, five minutes field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was that was something else. Uh, it was a kicker's day. Green Bay won. Okay, all right, cool. Uh, I need that for AFC North, so I need I need Cincy to lose for my for my schedule. But um, I lost my train of thought. Ooh, I got tape on this guy. Nice. Pants over here. Get that out of the way. Hold on one sec. I'm gonna go ahead and get the oil set up now too. I'll reset the screen here in a second. Do not worry, my friends. I've got you covered. Okay, I just wanna give you a little the microphone is causing a little bit of a drop shadow. Let me pull it back a little bit. There you go. Yeah, I think I think overall the picture clarity, at least from what I'm seeing through this to that, is a step up. It's not a massive step from the 12, but the 13 definitely has a... The actual lens is like twice the physical size. So I was, I was pretty impressed with that. Okay, so those of you new to OPR and everything else, what I'm doing here is I'm setting up the oil palette on the cardboard. The cardboard pulls out the linseed oil, which makes the paint dry dead matte and allows for much, much smoother blending and doing special effects with it. OPR is really kind of a repainting process. Um, I've had some conversation with some other guys that are coming from your traditional oil washes, enamel wash type conversation. Um, OPR is really just not that. That's one small limited element to it. So it's, it's just a lot of different stuff. Uh, Michael Weiss says, "What's the number? It's number two, brother. It's all all the all the details are in the in, in the description <laughs> down that way. Just click the show more under the video, and it drops the whole menu down, Michael, and it it'll give you all that information, including the link to King Art, uh, and then what the names are. You just cut and paste the name, put it in the search window, and it'll pop up that product for you. I've noticed when I when I repeat the cut the the pasting links, and I know I should do the um, the link window thing that I think is is available." Um, it does cut off some of it does kill some of the links so i've just gone with this process where you just have to cut and paste the, the brush name into the into their window it's not the end of the world but just so you know yeah it's all it's all in down below i, I wrote it all out for you guys <laughs> so you have the pencil set the oil set and the brush sets or brush stuff that you need okay so that's that this is the basic loadout we've got our light medium dark pigments right there i've got um this is to me x20a uh, that's the acrylic thinner, and I do have Mission Models thinner for later if I if I do something on one of those. I don't think I have a Mission Models paint job here, so I don't use it. Um, but for today, we'll probably be using the, the Tamiya's X20A. It's not X22, it's not X20, it's X20A. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sacrament says, question. Could you discuss at some point the balance between believable weathering and achieving contrast to make the piece? Yeah, no worries, absolutely. That's, that's kind of an ongoing um, hip check relevant thing to, to almost everything. Uh, one trick for international to be okay. We got that. Okay, sweet. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I know you're fine, Michael. Yeah, and that's where you'll find all that information, guys. If there's a couple of things with, with YouTube, if you guys are still a little bit unfamiliar with the, with the, the window in front of you, um, click the show more under the title, those two words, that'll drop the full description down. Inside that, after every show, I put the time chapter stamps. 
So when you go to replay and review it later on, uh, you can click the little blue timestamp. It'll move over. Uh, and it'll, whatever I type in there, that'll be the title of that little chapter. So it'll say like first demo, like OPR and real stock, like at whatever, at two, we're a half hour in. So at, at 30 minutes in, that's what it'll be. And then you can skip around. And that's how that works if you guys are not familiar. I know some of you are and some of you are not. So I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay, what else we got? I think we're good. Yeah, let me switch lens back to this dude. Zoom, zoom. I do like my little dude arm here. It's a little bit nicer. Works pretty good. Okay. So let's move all this over to the edge here. All right, I'm just kind of thinking this out. So we've got that down from last week. Got my eyeballs here. Okay. So say this is a spot where you stopped. We've we got the dust down. We did some kind of darker tones down here. Uh, we put, there's actually a little bit of a shade difference in between the, in between these guys. There's a light and a medium. Yeah, that's, you can see that pretty up close. You see that texture you get from that? Except it did stop. <laughs> Why did it stop? Okay, there it goes. Oh, my wife, oh no, no, no. Is the Wi-Fi out? Hold on one second. Okay, is it still working? It's still working. Okay. Are you gonna focus or are you not gonna focus? <laughs> Why does it keep saying? Hold on guys. Okay, let's try this one more time. Why is it not focusing? Do you not focus? All right, that's not good. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Am I too close? Okay, Wi-Fi is out, so it's, it's still working though. Okay, I'll try to keep an eye on the screen. That sucks. That is one fear I do have with the Wi-Fi and the connection and stuff like that. If that does, you're good. I think the focus isn't liking the phone. Yeah, damn the light, light. But I see you working on the box art. No, you're good, Patty Cakes. We're good. We're just getting started. I think I'm okay. I think that was a little bit of a glitch in the system. Okay. So what I'm going to do now? I'm going to start with pretending this is where well, this is where we stopped up, or pretending this is where you're going to pick up. Uh, let's actually start with some. Um, let's see here. Let's do a little bit. Let's get some stains going here. So to uh, Sacrament's question, what you try to do, uh, in this case, it's a little bit of a challenge because I'm kind of, I'm kind of winging this out where, where I don't have references in front of me. And I'm just, at this point in time with the rail stock here, I'm just showing technique. I just want to show you guys some, some ideas. So you can pretend kind of what this is for you. You know, whether this is a, a tank, a train, whatever it is in your world. Uh, we'll move into something more specific as we go forward here, but I just want to kind of just show this as that. Um, but what I'm going to show is is kind of um, let's see let's do some some fixer speckling first. So this will impart and kind of just a some random wet staining in this that you probably won't see right away. In fact, it'll probably disappear almost invisible. Cameras will pick it up, so your naked eye may not pick this up, but cameras will definitely pick this up. It's gonna take me a little bit to get in the in the in the groove here too, by the way. And this is just to add another little bit of a visible layer inside this this texture element. Here, dry that quickly. Alright, let's see if this will work. There it goes. Alright, there it goes. So just adding a little bit of a textural element to that, splashes and, and, and stains, you can kind of see them. They're a little bit on the big side, but I wanted to put something down that you could see. You can see them up in here and stuff like that. So that's just adding some, some textural elements to the dust. And then what I wanted to do, so I've used, so I used number five last, it is the number five. Did I not pick out the number three? What the hell? There it is. 
All right, it's a little bit, little bit smaller tip on this guy. I want to do a little bit more precise work. making sure everything's working right now. Camera, okay, good. So I'm just using this, this box car as, as, as a, an example of a, just a blank piece. So don't think this is actual train weathering, because <laughs> it's not. I'm not trying to do. So we're gonna try this with the liquids. That's a little bit. Get off. Just soak that up a little bit. It's a little heavy on that. But I'm going to try to show you something here. So by reversing the process slightly, depending on what part of the, you know, again, if it's a tank, it's a truck, whatever, if you need some kind of additional. Uh, effects I'm trying to do is, is kind of layer up on top of a, of a wet spot, kind of some different stuff, different colorways. So I'm using kind of a tapping motion letting them drop down into the wet fixer and that way they'll dry in that textural process. Now, this is probably gonna look really bad for a train. So again, don't, don't go and say, Hey, this is not what trains are because I'm not trying to. It's just a little bit of a warm up for me here too as well. So I'm mixing and I went back over the top a little bit more light and we're going to get a little bit of a tide mark and some other stuff too. And it probably looks way worse there, guys. I was going to say, the glare of that is pretty bad. Come back in here. So I've got the, just a clean brush here with a little bit of the, of the X20 fixer. And where I'm going to have those tide marks is I'm flicking the stains right around the edge of that. And what that will do is it'll visually trick your eye because there'll be multiple other little spots and stains and tide marks all around it. So it'll kind of... Instead of, instead of trying to uh, adjust that with the brush, so I kind of just diffuse that all out just with speckles and stains, just, to, just with a fixer in, in, the, in the dry pigment. It's gonna make a little bit of a, let me pull that off string. I don't wanna blow those dry pigments around, hold on. So as that starts to dry, I'm gonna try to hold on. So the autofocus still sucks. <laughs> I think that's the webcam app though. I don't think that's the phone. I think it's mostly the webcam app doesn't recognize as, as quickly. So this is a very different look to what the first, uh, the first dust go around was. And again, I'm just showing you process. I'm showing you technique. I'm using this because it's, it's a perfect little, you know, colorway. You can see it contrast. But, but you can see just how beautiful that looks in terms of just actual, just kind of dry dust, a little bit of the darker tones. The darker tones give you that impression, a little bit of the more moisture. And then what we can do is, is we can actually pump that up a little bit. We did that last time. So we'll take a little semi-clear. Semi-gloss clear. <laughs> Fuck. Semi-gloss clear, we'll take a little bit of this guy. Yeah, it's, it's, I think there's the lenses, the, the, the focus distance is slightly different for me. So I just have to train my hands because you can see that it gets a sharp picture. <laughs> Chris Pabs, what's up, brother? How are you? 
Uh, you're good. Okay. Yep. I'm late to the party. Nope. You're fine. Stanley Thinner. Um, what do you What are you guys talking? Um, did I miss something? Uh, whoever's cleaning these train cars not <laughs> doing a good. No, they're doing a shitty job. Stanley George. Thanks, Paul. Oh, I'm digging that. Yeah. No, I think just as purely just from a from a. I just want to get an application process down for you guys. But you can also see what happens too. One of the one of the things I talk about. Um, see how on the left here where we had the liquid fixer down. Uh, as an actual liquid on surface versus this is the airbrush airbrush splatter process over here you can see the two styles if you will <laughs> um, but that actually turns out pretty cool that's a neat little kind of dirt where you use that kind of multiple tones I don't have my little palette that's okay I'm actually going to thin this semi, semi gloss down with water quite a bit. So we get another brush because it doesn't like that. Those chemicals don't play well together. So this is the Mission Model semi clear, semi, semi gloss clear. Just a little heavily thinned down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is kind of where I want that moisture look to kind of stay. And you can also do a little flick, a little flickery. Get in real close. So what I'm trying to do is, is pretend this is actually still 187 in scale. And by using a really, really thin down semi gloss, uh, instead of, don't use a full gloss. I think a lot of guys jumped to full gloss thinking that's the way to go. Full gloss, you'd probably want to stay, save for more of a, of a really, really wet oil stain, like a grease oil stain near an engine or, or hub, wheel hub. But if you want moisture in the dirt, go with the semi, semi gloss. And I've thinned this way down probably 60, 70% with water. And I'm just kind of hitting the lower edges where the moisture would just kind of stay. And then I'm gonna flick a little bit around, just kind of get little tiny flicks and stains around. Again, this is just for effect, just to show you. Um, as much as I think it looks <laughs> looks really cool, it just is super. I don't know how a train would ever get like this, but it uh, it is a pretty nifty little 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 spiffery. Yeah, I feel bad, Chris, because I I sat down twice this weekend to listen to the new podcast. <laughs> And then just, I got two minutes into it and, and I got a phone call or, you know, something and I had to stop and I, uh, it's frustrated. Chris Pabs has a really nice, uh, built sideways podcast on, on, uh, on his deal. His, him and his boys, uh, they're on episode five or six, whatever. There's some good podcasts in the hobby. I will admit overall, there's some nice podcasts out there. So that's starting to hold, that's actually holding pretty well. I don't think I need much more than that. I feel bad because this goes like super fast. I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, see ya. Can I go watch football? Yeah. So what I've got, so what you've got here is you've got kind of the mix of the colors. You got the light dust down, and I've used my medium, kind of layered that up, and that's where I put the moisture back over the medium. And then I've used some of the darker ones as kind of a different little, you know, visible kind of muddy throw up or something on there where it's splattered up, and then put some kind of uh, thingy down there. Let's try this real quick. Let's see what it does when I go full dry. Yeah, so that effect actually is holding fairly well. And what you do is if, um, to continue that process, it did dry a little bit, just keep coming in with the, with the, um, the semi-gloss. What I'm trying to do is get that kind of half dried moisture in the dirt look a little bit. Okay, 
Just trying to flick some stuff up in here. And again, control the, the flickery, the speckling process by spinning, you know, turning whatever you, and I find this one to be like an ideal, uh, it's a Tamiya paint stir stick, and I think a few companies now make them. Getting a nice little kind of deal there. So that's kind of like how you get you capture kind of that wet look down low. Think guys at the same one. So now you can use an almost dry version. You just kind of go a little bit thinner, 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 less less uh, product as you go higher. That way it's kind of the more diffused and dry. So that kind of softens that up there a little bit, that transition of moisture to dry. So that's kind of a cool way to get so that, I know that's often asked about like one way to do that. You know, where you're, where you're capturing kind of the moisture stuck in the dust and the dirt a little bit. Yeah, four wheel and off-road and train, right? About the airbrush style, do you uh, dampen all the pigments with just a little bit per pass? Uh, we'll do, let me let me switch over it a little bit. Uh, what's up, TJ, how are you, brother? You're, you're fine, man. You guys are never late. Uh, it's a car that drives, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, I don't know why I just decided to do it. It, it. it fit because I have the layers all built up properly. So I was like, well, it just kind of worked. <laughs> we're just using the train. That's what we're doing. It's okay. I feel bad. Yeah, we'll switch over here. That one do it. We'll do it. Baby, do it one more time. Get off here. Okay. Oops. Just jam my hand in that. <clears throat> yeah, the oils are still good. <laughs> I can confirm. Okay. So let's go. Let's back up a little bit. We'll repeat the process. Okay, let me get this guy out of the way. I'm gonna go a little bit more precise, a little bit less. This is probably way out of scale, but this is good for just showing you guys. Again, it's this <laughs> comes out really nice. So if you're looking for a technique like that, the front of a low hole, like the lower nose of a tank, um, you know, chassis frame rolls under trucks or rigs or off-road stuff. Uh, anything like this, this is a good way to show kind of multiple layers uh, through the through the thing. I think one thing I see too um, is is don't be afraid to go a, a really bright light colored dust in terms of building up a contrast. I think what I was trying to get into, I cut myself off with Sacrament's question about that is really what I'm trying to do is at this point in time, it's 187 and, and actually off camera, it, it does look really, really nice in terms of the color way of terms of that comes off as a dust you're reading everything as you should read it. It's it's showing to me what I'm looking for. Uh, it's not train weathering, but as far as dust weathering and dirt weathering, it's got a really nice scale effect and it's really unique and the clumps and stuff are all pretty nice. Um, so what I would also do then is is the bulk of everything starts with, in the reality of, of, of any kind of, whether, whether you have actual pictures of it or not, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, but you have to start with the references. You have to start with the photos. You have to start with the images of what does all this stuff look like in the real world. And then you got to come in and balance kind of, okay, well, if I put this down one-to-one -one on the model and it just doesn't have the pop, like this, it's not giving me the vibe, whatever it is. A lot of times it's instinct. You have to go, okay, well, that's just like over here, you know? And so what I did was I've kind of come in over here and really popped it, punched this up. And so it's kind of understanding that maybe this is overdone, but it's still within that realm of believability. And so now I've got something really, really interesting, whereas this is still really nice, but at the same time, it's, it's not nearly as interesting to the viewer. So it's that combination between the two of, of, of balancing your references. You know, and if it is like a gun plug conversation, then I would be looking at construction equipment. I would be looking at how dusty does something get that's, that's 10 or 15 feet tall on the bottom layers. And then, okay, well, I want to punch this up because it's a scale model on a desk. And I want to get some visual representation of that, but I don't want to go crazy where, where, where my chips are, you know, three feet across uh, and, and completely out of scale. With dirt and dust, you can kind of, it's hard to go out of scale with dirt and dust a little bit, if you know what I mean, like, because it, the, the nature of the products that we use kind of keeps you contained. Um, you know, if I, if I put a scratch on this, on this surface here, um, the distance of that scratch and the scale that is, so if this is 187, I do a scratch that's the length of that, that word or whatever this, you know, you're gonna to have to imagine something's come along and scrape that whole thing 
Whereas if I do a one or two inch scratch and scale, it's gonna be the tiniest little marks, but that's hyper realistic. So you have to kind of balance. There's no answer to that question, basically. There's no right or wrong, but there's no real answer to it other than that. It takes experience, it takes your references, and it takes your instincts to come back and forth and do all this stuff. Mostly it's a reference conversation. I think I have. It's the one, the, yeah, the one I don't have, I, SM2 sold out so long ago. Um, and then everybody hit me up for extra copies. And <laughs> I had like extra little, you know, I have a box of 10 and they're all, that's the one that has the, the actual photos in it. That book in particular, I went outside and took photos of stuff that was out there and then related it to the tractor I was doing in the book. But um, it's, it's, it's usually going to be that start and, and that's kind of be your, your gauge for what you're really trying to do, Sacrament, in terms of what's believable, what's artistic, what's too much. You know, there's no, you have to play the game, you know what I mean? You have to get on the field and play. Uh, and it's kind of, it's, it, I keep going back to sports analogies, but that's going to be one of the, the bigger tasks. It's probably the hardest thing to do. It's probably like the single hardest thing to like really pull off successfully is, is what's that balance. And that takes time and practice and everything. So, but to what I wanted to do today a little bit with this guy is just kind of come in. Same idea over here. Again, it's a matte surface. Oops, the microphone. Well, it's going to be there now. And yeah, this is a super long brush. This one I probably could cut up. I wouldn't care. So you can see I'm just laying down a real conservative, nice, easy dust layer. Dry pigments. It's a light mixture. Stippling. You can you can kind of do some. Gives a little bit of, of, of some of the like streaky look. You know, we can kind of play with that a little bit this time. See what it does. You could technically leave this. I would not because this is a this is a very fragile surface at this point in time. Okay, let me set up my airbrush. Put a little little thinner in this guy. Oop. <laughs> I missed. Okay, that's way too much. Crank down my mag. So I want again to repeat. I want about a, like a three to five psi. Uh, so so Sacrament comes from the figure painter background. Okay, cool. Yeah, and that's so. And they they go they go almost too extreme to emphasize and scale with with the lighting and everything with figure painting. It doesn't play as well with machines. I will say that much. It does. Color modulation is where that all actually came into. It's all from that conversation. So it's it's a bit of a um, a balancing act, if you will. Uh, so so what goes on again? The small tube oil paint said okay. Yes, it is. The twelve mils are are perfect. Um, they're a great price, so you get the 12 mil um, tube, the, the King Art box. Where is it? Oh, it's right there. Here, yeah. So Michael's trying to buy stuff. <laughs> Michael waits till stream to buy it all, and then he inter interrupts us. So it's all your fault. So he's, he's looking to purchase this. And I'll just interrupt myself for a second. We'll go right back. Whoops. That's the other thing is the two times. So this is the, it's the 12 mil tubes. Oil paint, 24 paint set. This is what they look like. I've shown this before. Um, they're they're really good, middle range quality, which is kind of they, they're real creamy. So you can get some beautiful blends and streaks out of this stuff. Um, and these are all the colors that it comes with. The only thing that this set misses, at least out of the gate, is like a tan or a buff or a beige or a dirt color, like a really pale dirt color. So you're gonna have to use uh, blending to kind of come up with using a white and then kind of blending some of these other tones in here to get some dirt tones and some of these over here. That's the only real criticism I have. Otherwise you get beautiful greens. Uh, this is great for Gundams, uh, sci-fi, civilian stuff, um, because you have all these beautiful blues and reds and greens and there's even some great purples in here. There's two nice purples in here. Uh, there's a nice crimson in here. Um, and so you, and you got a really nice tube of white, which just has a clear logo. So this is that, it's like 20 bucks for the set or something. It's really, really cheap price. It's a great starter set, but the 12 mil tubes are fine. Perfect for our needs. It'll last, it'll last plenty of time. Plenty of time to learn on for sure. 37 mil tubes last a decade or more. So 12 mil is, is actually what I was, what I would recommend. Okay, so over here, but did that make sense, Sacrament? That, that is kind of between the lighting and, and 
vehicle modeling painting per se doesn't use um, in a general context outside color modulation doesn't use force lighting so in the weathering conversation what you will see happen is for example uh, I won't paint I'll paint it maybe something later if you remind me but say this you have this ledge here and you see how the light catches that and you have the dark shadow underneath you can force paint that a little bit in a, in a, mil, in a, in a vehicle setting but it's not super common. The European modelers do it a little bit, but you have to be careful because it'll, it'll, it'll control the model and what you'll find. Color modulation is a different conversation and it's kind of what you're talking about, but, um, and that's part of my problem. <laughs> so he says, and this is true, when I write about this stuff, this is my problem. So he touches on it, he goes, thanks for going into that. Your explanations and demos are so in depth yet intuitive. You really helped me understand armor modeling and applying it across all that. That's, that's cool, I appreciate that. My, it's so hard to extrapolate all this out, but it's super basically simple. Like you saw the dust go down, it's intuitive. And I'm trying, how do you teach intuition? It's, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit like that, so. Um, but these streams help me too, because it'll make me a better writer and all that stuff for the future. So anywho, did that help? I hope it's helpful. <laughs> I hope it is. Sometimes I feel like I'm babbling on and on and on. You guys are going, shut up. Okay, so we don't have this fixed yet over here, but you can see this was just an application. Now let's get a little bit more serious to the, to the forms and everything on this side. So what I'm trying to show you is this is how you kind of do it. And then over here, this is what will be kind of more uh, to, the, to the thing that I've got. Let me, okay. I had that set up, I have to get off. Okay, so I'm gonna spit the fixer. So again, I'm about, it's about a foot, about 20 centimeters for my metric fellas. I have to go slightly in the cameras. And I'm just going to, I just spit the fixer and it's the X20A because this is just basic. And it's a little spotty. You can see how, you can see how that, that happens, which is cool. And I'm actually just going through some air pressure just to kind of dry it as I go so, so I don't have to use a hair dryer as much. So it'll kill a lot of it. That's why I said you'll do multiple layers. But that first pass, when you, when you hit the light, that's how thin of dust you get. But it's kind of on there. So I've got the flat rake, so another, when you have a vertical place, like now you don't probably see it as much as I do on the surface because the light's slightly, see it's right there on the surface still. So if you want to go, if you have like a vertical kind of deal, like this. So I've got a flat, I've took the flat rake here, uh, it's got a little bit of the same fixer on it. Wiped it off, hit the camera, <laughs> got to do my job proper. Just run some vertical streaks through that with the fixer, just raw fixer straight. And you can kind of use it to clean the, the upper surfaces a little bit. You can pull that kind of th through the dust. So the dust has already been fixed with, this, with the airbrush a little bit. Now you probably, let's see if we can see this stuff. trying to do now is almost like a rain streak if you will through the dust it's just this is another very very common look in the side of a car we see this on our own road cars all the time so I've got that really hyper thin layer of dust on there oops so just pure fixer on the brush wide brush just coming through and pulling right through and I recommend, that's why I recommend airbrushing the fixer down first the one time, kind of gets it in place. And then you kind of cut through it a little bit with a comb, which is what this process is. It's kind of like brushing it with a comb. Get down in here a little bit. Go on that little ledge right there. I'm just pulling from the, I'm pulling from the, the joint outward. So it's kind of a, like a quick little brush pull there. But you can see you get these really subtle little rain streaks right in the dust right there. Now that's in scale to me. Now right at this point in time, I'd be really, really happy with this. Like if I'm just kind of doing this for, for uh, clean off that little 
tidy that up a little bit. So hopefully, and that's, again, this is, this is like, okay, so let's back this up a little bit because I know some of you are really familiar with it. Um, that's exactly how I did this, the mighty big dog trip. The, the one effect that a lot of people like for that too. No, that's good. I'm glad you, that's helpful. <clears throat> um, what I just showed you guys there. Now I've done it multiple layers on this guy, but that's, that's how you do this on the side of the Tiger One. I've done it through multiple layers of pigments with that, but that's that's what I was doing. So when you see that on, on the model, a little bit. So all this right in here. So what you go back and what you want to watch is when you go back and, and I'll do I'll do another pass. As I'm getting in the groove. So again, take the pigments here. And you can see for that tiger model, it's a little bit more of a richer orangish, reddish yellow color. This is more of a grayish tan colorway, so it won't be quite as uh, potent in the colorway. But the technique's the same. You know, and you, you mix your pigments according to the colors you're looking for. So I'm going a little bit of a mix of medium and light on this pass here. So just a real gentle stipple. Probably shouldn't have picked that up. <laughs> that. Don't do that. Okay. All right, same brush. Okay, so I've got my, my flat brush, a little bit of thinner. One pass through. I'm kind of wiping off in the towel to, to remove any residual pigments on that. So you can see you get a nice little rain streak through that, a little bit of kind of a... And then what you can do is you can kind of wipe the top parts up a little bit so you don't have quite so, such a stark contrast. So it softens that up here and you get kind of the more powerful look down there. Again, a little bit more pigments. So I have to do this. So 187, so this is, this is the third the size of the Tiger. So that was 135, this is 187. So you can see I'm being real cautious here. This is like the third layer of pigments on right on top of those rain streaks. You just want, just, you just want a little smidge for scale. So I'm just kind of tapping that in right over the rain streaks. Come back in with my little airbrush fixer here. Pull down a few more streaks in this. You can see just, just simple single strokes. Don't get too crazy, but see how you're getting a nice compilation right there in that joint, right in here. Or it could stay in right there. So this is like the third or fourth layer now. This is what I'm talking about. You just slowly build up these, these really thin dust layers. Just let the stipple motion kind of crush those pigments onto that surface a little bit and build up that opacity. I went to put a little bit more of a medium down on these little tabs down here. Airbrush fixer. Okay, I'm gonna. 
two different brushes on this on this vertical pass now. So we're gonna go to let me see if there's any question, am I missing anything? Okay. Okay, I'll catch I'll catch up in two seconds with just making sure everything's still working. Are we getting spammed in there? Okay, no spam girls. Okay, sweet. Alright, we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna use a couple different just go for more of a try to do a one and done kind of a thing. I'm using the rivets next to it as kind of a guide. Now switch brushes and kind of go back over that a little bit. So it's a little wet. If that's a little wet. What I might be able to do, let's see if I can pull this off. Just like what I did on the left side there. Well, that's the hair still wet. No, I'm sorry. Hold on. This microphone is just, I'm trying to get the sound quality better. So I have to get the microphone closer, but it gets right in the way. Sorry about that. No, oh, wait, what am I trying to do? Ah, I lost it. It dried up. All right, hold on. Let me see if I can do that again. I'm going to try that one more time. Hold on. Hold on. Let's do one more pass. And then I'll get to your questions. Real gentle pressure too. I'm not pushing down hard at all. Like I'm not I'm not trying to force that brush down. This is coming up pretty solid. I'd be really happy with this. Kind of a kind of a if it rained on top of this this surface and, and you know if it moved through an area that that region was seeing some like right now it'd be a transition, like it rained for five minutes today and it was dusty earlier. Kind of an idea. It's actually not half bad. Okay, what do, what do you got here? Uh, what are we doing? Let me scroll back up. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, it took a while to sink an airbrush thinner at low pressure to fix pigment dust if for heavier texture to fix eyedropper on the thinner fixture. Okay, but that, Pete Tui did that, did that, today's demo kind of hit that home a little bit more. Uh, Cause we have, we have, yes, uh, what's today, Sunday, Wednesday's demo, uh, showcasing kind of this application here. And then I've come in and, and shown you round two if you want it, if you need something to that effect. And then over here is kind of more rail scale, more true to the, the model that I've got on the bench, just laying down some simple dust, uh, two color, two, two range of colors, a light and a medium, and then the vertical streaking, it kind of the rain streaking a little bit. Hopefully that kind of shows you that. And you can see kind of how I pull in the airbrush and, you know, three to five PSI, I kind of spit that down on there, lock it in, in the surface. Um, hopefully that, that hit home. Um, and it's just a fixer. So I just use an I just use an acrylic paint fixer for the process. It's all its purposes is, is nothing to do other than that. Uh, it dries dead matte. It dries really fast. Um, it's very workable. There's a little bit of, of like there's enough time in there to work it, which I like. Uh, let me ask. Paul's got uh, Ozzy. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Marino, how are you, man? You're not late, man. You're good. Um, just getting in the groove. A little dusty groove here. Question. What would you do to weather the top of the side of the boxcar? Like like up here, Paul, the top sides. Oh, can do that for you. Uh, Mike asks, Mike, what would you, Mike would you use that technique on the side of a turret? Yes, you can. Um, I think I did on the Tiger one as well. Now remember though, on, on as as you go higher up on a machine, uh, whether it's a robot or a tank or whatever like that, uh, I tend to switch products because what you get is it's really it doesn't play as well visually as, as an armor, like as like as a thing where you're unless the dirt and dust was getting thrown up really high because now you're at like a 10 foot, a 15 foot, a 20 foot level, the dust being thrown up. So I kind of switched the products because oils give you that more subtlety to it than the pigments do. Um, so sometimes I do switch products in between, but I can I can pull it. See if we did. I think I did that on the, some parts of the Tiger turret. I think. Uh, also, what would you do with the ladder? I'd cut it off and put on a much nicer one. <laughs> It's molded solid. It's brutal. Um, you have to treat each one of these little guys 
is kind of a thing. So as you can see right now, I've treated the whole surface and what I would do, uh, and we can we can actually do that here a little bit. Uh, we'll do a little bit of the, I don't know why it doesn't want it. Oh, it's being difficult. <laughs> it's being fussy. I don't like it when it's being fussy. Like stay, <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> like it was kept shift, there's there's weights on this thing and it, and it keeps flopping around. That's why it's why it's doing that. Uh, it's the weights are for the for the actual what it's supposed to be doing. G Construction, what's up, man? How are you? Two hands. Model railroads use everything under the sun. I make my own pigs from soft plastics. Yeah, um, yeah. You can use you can use a spray bottle as well too. I can imagine. Uh, for me and, and what we do and the precision, the reason I actually like the airbrush to be truthful because I can actually get fairly precise with that. I think some of the spray bottles you, you might be doing more <laughs> kind of a thing. Uh, so just uh, on the, on that note of you can use a spray bottle, I'm sure, but it's also it's uncontrollable. Whereas with an airbrush, you can you get much more control out of that. So if you're looking for more precision, um, that would be the I'd still lean towards. And we all have most of us have airbrushes anyways, and, and putting a couple drops of thinner into an airbrush to spit the, as a fixer isn't a big deal, usually. So I think it's a pretty solid plan. Model route, yeah. Let's see. Uh, okay, did I, Paul? Was that correct? Do you want to do something up here? Is that what you're the upper edge? Okay, gotcha. I see your answer. Okay, <laughs> it's okay, P two E. We're all we're dudes. We're all we're men. <laughs> we're all a little on the dense side, right? Um, is there on those series? Yeah, no, no. Normally, I'd cut off all these. Like these little these all these details around here are molded pretty thickly solid. Um, some of the better trains uh, stuff. This is a cheap uh, low level one, cheap cheapy one. So it's just cast in there. Um, okay, like a perfume. Okay, so there. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So you're going a little bit more. Yeah, you're doing the same idea. But again, if you have airbrushes, it's, it, it does, you know, if you're set up like this setup is, which is typical where you have an airbrush, it's also pretty easy to do. Uh, Franco, hello, buddy. How are you? Internet died, but I'm back in. Yeah, I've had a little bit of internet issues here too as well. It looks like it's still off. Yeah, it's okay. I'm plugged in, so at least it switched to the USB cord. That's why I do that. I have the phone plugged in directly to the computer in case the Wi-Fi dropped, and it looks like it did. I don't know what's going on. But I'm on Ethernet through the computer and I'm plugged into the computer. So we should, we're, it looks like we're good. We're protected. Uh, what else? Okay, cool. But that's a nice in, in scale effect in 187. I'd be happy with that personally. That's actually probably some of the better. Because this is my, if you remember over here, was the first kind of play with that stuff. Um, this is the first few streams. This is my first attempt. You can see what I did. I didn't do anything in the in the in the inside of the ladder there, but the, I did some dry brush chipping for the actual um, um, rungs of the ladder. Um, but what I did, what I was trying to say too, is there's a few different questions going around there. Um, get distracted easily. Um, is address the whole thing at one time, and then you can come in and be specific with with that. So let's do that. Probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't push the pigments. I probably also use a, a smaller brush, and that's pissing me off too. Because like, why is it not? Did I talk? I, I fear I cleaned my brushes out, and I threw my old pigment one away. I think I can use this guy. This looks like an older number two. I can probably get away with. Get away with. Okay. So switch your brushes according to the scale size that you're working in. So what I did was, um, I wouldn't use that big meaty brush for these right in here. But let's let's put some stuff in there. Pigments do not take much. So this is the problem when you have, this is what we, when we talk about scale modeling, we, when we kind of quip at removing parts and stuff, this is supposed to be a pass through, you know, I'm assuming those, those steps aren't solid, solid, but we're gonna pretend that they are. So I'm keeping the dust captured up where underneath that step right up in there, that d down here it's gonna be a little clearer because that's where the, the you can either touch it or the wind or the whatever will be easier to clean that up. So use the surface details as kind of where the dust will collect. It's usually pretty you know common sense stuff. But you're almost inclined just to, to dust the whole thing up and that's why I kind of was, I mentioned that a little bit. Get that dust up under where it's gonna be hard for the dust to come out of. That idea.
and then if you need to put a little bit because you'll get you'll get air pressure vacuums and, and weird um, aerodynamics and stuff as this thing this thing's obviously going to be moving just kind of just work that dust in a little bit around use the details as kind of the you know around the rivets and again, this is a pigment technique process. There's, there's other way, and we'll switch to other techniques for dust. I'm just trying to show you the, the, how to work with light thin dust pigments to build that confidence up for you guys. Again, this is all over a matte surface. This makes it really easy. And I've just switched brushes to a smaller size to affect smaller areas. You know, same as all other brush conversations go. Again, I don't know if a real, usually the rail cars I'm seeing in references don't quite stay this dusty because I'm guessing both moving, you know, it's like road vehicles on, 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 uh, on the streets and stuff. They don't get super dusty. Certain regions probably have it, but a lot of the, the rail photos, at least over summer, most of these things are pretty dry, pretty clear. They're faded and dust, they're dusted in terms of like that thing's beat to hell, but they're not like dusty, dusty, like dirt dust. Down low they are, down here they are, but up here they're not as much. So if I'm honest to all that. So that's getting in there in the first go around. So I'm spitting that fixer from, gosh, almost a foot and a half. Cause I'm above the camera and everything else. If there's a negative of using the same brush for everything, <laughs> you forget which brush is for what chemical. So what I'm doing now is just is just direct applying a liquid fixer into these stairs in here, or these this ladder area. Give it this will give it a slightly different look. There's a little bit of streaking in there too. And I'll look up in two seconds. Make sure everything's still working. And that's the thing with pigments is you really need them to be 100% dry to really, really tell what they're gonna look like. So that's just getting some stuff up in there and you can come in and do the same. Okay, that brush is dried completely now. Put that back down, get this guy. Again, I'll look up in, in two seconds. So this is just the same same concept as before, flat rake with a little bit of thinner on it as a fixer and just kind of brush some more in there. Actually, that, that gets some nice little, real subtle little dust up in there. And in this scale, this actually plays really nice. Yeah, that actually turns turn out pretty solid. And so I would also do this in terms of, if you haven't chipped the model yet, there's, there's two ways to play that, say for example, and I'll answer questions in two seconds. The way to play this, um, so say for example, this is for real. 
and now I've got to figure out, okay, well, do I want shipping? Do I want scratches and stuff like that? I would recommend in this conversation, because I'm just showing dust and stuff for today, but I would probably have done like a sponge chipping and dry brush chipping first and then dusted this model so that you can tone those chips down with the weathering. Uh, and, and that's uh, something I see a lot of guys make the mistake of. In other words, they'll chip it now. Uh, and that's probably a mistake because really what you want is you want the dust to come in and, and put that back into the timeline of, of when this all happened in, in the real life. So to that conversation, because this is, again, just a dust stream um, and there's plenty of chipping streams that dump, but um, hopefully that uh, that helps. Let me scroll back up. I see we got some faces in here. Hello, Evan. Uh, G, I said hello. Uh, what else we got? Oh, let's see. Uvon Singer. Hello. How are you? Um, and what else we got? Just kick mine, okay. Two hands, holy zoom, zoom. I learned from a figure painter, uh, a Paladin. Paladin, how are you, man? Uh, is that a Paladin LV1? Is that what that says? I learned from a figure painter that he lets the oil soak on cardboard for an hour and transfer it to an oil paper, oil palette paper. I'm not familiar with the oil palette paper myself. Um, what we have here, I do the same thing with the cardboard, uh, which is where it all comes from, um, but I don't transfer it over to anything else. I just use it raw on the cardboard. Um, when he's done for the evening, he puts it in a clipboard and puts it in the freezer. So he's using the freezer. Um, yeah. So what what we're, what you missed there, Paladin, is is you know we're just it's right here. Zoom back one more lens. It's right there. It's this dude right here. Um, so I just put it in a Tupperware. You know, it's, it's the same basic principle. Just put it in the Tupperware. Same idea. What they're what the guys are doing, what you're using with the fridge and in the freezer and stuff, is you just go into a cold, low humidity climate so it doesn't dry out. That's all that that is. But that'll stay like that for, for a week or two, we're fine. I usually get three or four days out of these anyways when I'm working hard, because other than that, you have to make new ones anyway. Um, but yeah, that's what, we, that's what we do with all that. Uh, Panzermeister, hi, how are you, Evan? What's up, bud? How you been? Uh, JP, JP, hello from Portugal, Forest Ghost, hello, how you doing? Okay. Yep. All right. So did that help, Paul? In terms of getting the dust where you, where you kind of was talking, we're asking about just different areas. It's all the same process. There's nothing like if you watch it, go back and watch the brushwork. There's nothing I'm doing sp special for the area per se, almost except for where the smaller the area goes, the more re the more refined the brush is. I haven't. And I don't want to. I, I promise I don't want to shift the oils just yet. I might have to though. I don't have a good enough game plan. I thought I had my game plan all set up in my head and I didn't. I don't like that. All right, <clears throat> where's my cap? Because I'm going to spill this guy. But these effects actually came out quite nice, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, what we can do, I suppose we can do that. Yeah. Let's see here. Switch my brushes out. Get those out of the way. Let me grab a couple of these guys. That one, I need a blender. Time I use a hair dryer after this point in time, <laughs> it's just gonna be blowing those pigments around. Okay, reset this guy up here. What I want to do here is I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more, not too much more, but a little bit more. Hold on one second. I'm gonna go a little bit higher with this. Come on, get, get off of it. I'm gonna get the camera just out of the brush range a little bit. Come on. Move, there we go. I've got all these cranked down. Hold on. I don't want to keep hitting the camera. It's annoying because it kicks me out of my, my rhythm. It's like music. 
what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set this up so you guys can see the blending on the palette work. This is kind of some questions I'm having lately. Uh, so you can see the thinner here, odorless thinner here, the palette's right here. You've got all your dust colors right here that I'm gonna be using for this. And I've got my, my oil brushes for this. So I've got my number twos and stuff. So let me set this up a little bit, get my brushes ready. So I've got a couple blenders here and a couple color brushes. All right, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, everybody good? Check the chat one more time and then I'll get my head down. Okay, sweet. Happy Thanksgiving. Is it Canadian Thanksgiving? Huh, huh, there you go. I think I'm in the right spot. If not, then get out of the way. There we go. Because I have to kind of turn my brush sideways, it's right into the microphone, but here. So what I wanted to do was, was spend a little time, a little extra time showing you uh, getting the oils on the, on the brush. So I'm going between the thinner, I'm wetting the palette, and then I'm pulling through each color. Like I'm not jamming the brush in there. I can kill you. <laughs> like get out of the way. Every time I turn the brush, it's right in the way. So what I'm trying to do is load up a little dust color on the brush with the oils. Come onto the paper towel. So you can see that there. I'm trying to get zoomed to see all surfaces so you can still see the work without me going in and out with the, with the zoom zoom. So straight over the pigments from before. So I'm using an oil paint now to punch up some of this. And the red one's the blender. So I'm just kind of tapping the softer, the upper edge of that and the lower edge of that where I put that down. So I'm just applying the oil with a little bit of confidence knowing that, that there's enough color down I think sometimes, and I've talked to a few of you about this, where the oil is going down is, for dust is a little too uh, translucent or too thin. So what I'm trying to do is just kind of use a little bit more of a punchy application to reinforce kind of what I was trying to do earlier. And I'm just using these little rivet details and kind of putting a little bit around some of these rivets. Not all of them, but just kind of punching this up. And I'm working in the same basic principles as I've been talking about before with the light to dark. And I'm working in my light dust tones first here. And this is building up additional layers on top of the pigments kind of an idea. It's real, real kind of a simple basic principle. And I'm just using the blender to kind of soften what I applied. I'm not really wiping it back out or anything. Now that thinner looks like it's doing stuff there, but what'll happen is because that's a solvent on top of an acrylic basically. So that kicks it back down. Get these guys out of here. So if I zoom in, you can kind of see that that's It's too much thinner, I'm gonna wipe that out a little bit. So 
now I'm just kind of slightly streaking some of those little pin washes around the, around those rivets. So this is this is working in a really tight scale again. This is 187. So the the pigments underneath are fixed. They're not really going anywhere with this with this kind of process. There's so little liquid involved. But you'd be hard pressed to do this with pigments at this scale and this size. So this kind of gives you a double application of product where you got the pigments for the light dust stuff and then you come back in with a little bit more of the oils and you can kind of punch that up. Hair dryer locks it all in the place too. Hey, what's up, uh, Isotope? How are you? Okay. So now what I can do is, is with that light color down, I've got one more brush here, go a little bit more of a darker. Just a just enough so you can see the palette a little bit. So I want you to see. So same idea. I'm getting a little bit of a darker tone here, darker brown. The Windsor Newtons are it's a ten year old tube of paint. They don't hold up quite as well in terms of the time conversation. So I know the new like the new oil paints from King Art. They they last a long time. These old these are Windsor Newtons over here. They're ten years old, so they're a little bit. They don't last quite as long in terms of the, how how wet they stay on the cardboard even with the refrigerator. So they require a little bit more. Cut through the top layer, come back in with the wet brush, and you can kind of, the, the, the workable paint's in the middle there. So I want, there we go. This thing is so tiny. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to do a couple. So you can see how there's literally no thinner on that. And what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of a darker tone. Around some of these, there's these little tiny, tiny rivets that are on the surface that I can see. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, you guys can see them. <clears throat> a little bit of a shadow, a little bit. Switch into the thinner brush. Oh, the blender, sorry. Pull some of it down a little bit. So since this is kind of a dust pigment stream, focus my friend. I don't want to get too much in the grease and grime on this particular little model right now. Kind of just random little spots. You can use speckling for this too. I'm gonna just get them in the group. I want to move on to the next uh, thingy. So this is trying to keep it in scale. And again, you're gonna really wanna look at photos for this stuff too. Just pulling down a few of them and kind of streaks a little bit. So now I'm just switching up a little bit to the speckling up here. Super hyper tight, small. These are, you almost want these invisible for on purpose. There's, is, I would say the, the, the realistic amount of uh, oil that color that's actually on this brush is really limited. Yeah, I 
just my biggest problem is <laughs> if I zoom out to the palette, you don't see the work. If I zoom in, you don't see the palette. So I'm trying to keep it on the thing here. Just so you can kind of see, because I get a lot of questions about how to load the brush up and, and that kind of stuff. And I do want to give a little bit more instructions for that, which is the point. So I'll get the question. What is that missing? <laughs> Sal fell asleep. Yeah, it is pretty early there for you, Sal. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. I'm going to punch a few of these up here. Not too much though, I don't want to get too crazy because I want to show other stuff. And this is where you have to kind of, so even, even the comments like Sacrament's comment before where we're talking about kind of, you know, where do you judge and how do you judge in terms of, like right now I'm getting to the point where if I keep pushing this, I get to the point where it goes, it, it starts to go where this is actually, while it looks fun and cool, it's, it's the reality is this is, this is too much. Uh, for the for the truth of 187 you know railroad stuff or is this over here is a little you can see it's a little bit more con controlled and contained uh, you can get away with this a little bit so that's part of that conversation there uh, but what I wanted to show was when that stage there was a little bit kind of and we'll do we'll keep doing with the, the palette too we're gonna switch to the tank um, that actually didn't turn out half bad <laughs> pretty happy with that I miss any question questions do you ever get clumps of oil yeah that's what I was trying to talk, talk. I know I don't I don't know what what your what your real issue was with that um, you're welcome Chris um, you'd have to the only thing I could think of if you're getting clumps of oils drew was that you'd probably just really jam that brush up with a lot of oil paint and just not enough thinner you can see how here um, you know I don't know if it was just a product you're using the type of product you're using but see how that looks right there on the on the screen there. That that's what I do. I mean, I'm don't you know if I'm pulling in oils. See how I load that brush up there, so it should it should look you know. If it, it's a zoom zoom. Like that's that's kind of where you want to be with how much oil you have in that brush. You don't want to have like if it's clumping out like you were having, you probably had way way too much paint. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of. You know, because it's because even when you flick it down and speckle it. So this will probably be way too much. So you can see how close I get. And again, it's leaving a slight texture. It's hyper tiny small though. But you can also wipe that off with, with, the, with the brush and thinner as well. Like even though that looks like it's a lot, that's a ridiculously small amount right there. So wipe that down a little bit so I can kind of keep that in check. That's the only thing I can think of, Drew, is that you probably had way too much paint on the brush if you're getting the bigger clumps like that that I saw. But that's what I was trying to show is the mixing on the palette and, and, and that kind of process too, because it's it's it is it is a critical element to success with this, you know, is, is being able to load the brush up properly, get the get the tip reset, use the blenders properly, you know, control everything with the thinner. Um, you know, that's as much as I probably ever really load up on a brush for all the stuff I'm trying to do. Don't want to get the tank in the oil paint. It looks like it's in. It's right. It's right hovering just over it. Okay. Actually, you know what? Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> just put the turret down, dumb shit. <laughs> I don't need the hole just now. I usually don't cram myself up like this either, but I'm trying to show. I'm trying to find a place where I can show the brushwork and everything. So same concept. I have I have uh, the dust in there. Uh, shit balls. I don't want it. It's the wrong side of the hatch because that's the, the open side where he comes out. And so if you remember, these are watercolor pencils on the top from the last stream. So we're just putting down the, the dust oils now. Same idea. 
just to diffuse uh, wet application. So you can see that, okay, cool. Loading the brush back up. And I already had enough thinner in there because I can see how wet this is. It's admittedly a little easier with devices like this, where there's details and stuff. But you can, what I want to, let's see if you, yeah. I'm trying to show contrast. So I think what happens is sometimes you guys go too conservative with the color choices, or maybe you, you're limited in what you have on the palette. So again, I'm starting with my lightest tones in here. I'm just tapping it out around the, around the various details. And if I want to go more opaque towards the joints in the corners, then just add a little bit more paint. And if you need a little, if you need it to blend or flow out a little bit more and add a little bit more thinner, like that, if you want more of that kind of flowy wash look, you go both ways. There's, you, there's no right or wrong. You're, you know, it's all you're open to whatever you, whatever your requirements are. Blender brush, red one. No thinner on it, fine. So again, a little coffee shake around the, around the edge of that. Soften that edge up like that. See how I leave all that in there alone. I don't, I don't touch any of that. I'm just blending around the edge of that cloud right there. Clean brush with a little bit extra thinner, not much. This is just kind of a softening. And it looks like the watercolor pencils hold up fine. I'm not seeing any kind of weird weirdness happening. Same thing, just kind of blending that outer edge of, of that shape right there. Kind of tighten it up a little bit. Streak out a little of some of this stuff here. And truth is, this is, I find this really like easy and almost therapeutic. This is the fun part of the weathering where you start doing a little bit of the dust work with the oils and stuff like that. And as far as the colors go, there's there's three colors involved. So you do get a little bit kind of, of, of kind of an interesting little, you'll, you'll see slight color variations in the dust, which is cool. And I'm just using this blender Just kind of having to do what I want it to do. A lot of it's kind of a soft touching stippling motion. The, the blender brush itself, you can see how dry that is. There's almost no extra thinner going down per se. It's, it's, it's damp to work with, but it doesn't really flow extra thinner into anything. Kind of streak a little bit because you get a little bit of like directional flow from the movement of the tank and stuff and then you can kind of come back and if it's too much you can kind of kill it or wipe it off and again if you if you if you screw up you know it's, it's not like say say you wipe all this out okay no big deal there is a lot of flexibility in in uh, malleability um, with the oil paint come back in Same thing, just kind of, you can see how this, the application is a little bit of a stipple as well. And this is for a top flat surface. So it's a slightly different, but even though it's similar to this kind of, if you notice when I apply things with both the pigments on the rail and this, it's, it's kind of that there's a little bit of a stipple motion in there. And you can see how gentle I'm being, like I don't crush the brush or anything like that. Switch to the blender, kind of soften that up a little bit. Well, that's that's if you you know that's kind of like if you'd screwed up and you wanted to redo it.
Squid Lips, what's up, buddy? How are you? How you doing, man? How's it go? See if we can come up here, a little dust around this hinge going on the hatch itself. And kind of just stipple that in kind of a, of a pattern, working with the shapes. Oftentimes, like, like what you do is when you'll study a vehicle, the reason I'm doing it like this is this particular hatch here, and even though this one's completely missing, um, will be in a vertical position when the, when the crew's riding around. This, that hatch flips forward, and he'll, he'll be sticking his head out from behind. So that in that vertical thing, that means the dust will collect down at the, at the con, uh, on that hinge down there a little bit. Now, I know enough of T-34s to know that it'll do that, but that's what I'm talking about with references. You're going to want to study this stuff so you pick up on those little things. So instead of putting like a pin wash in there and kind of letting that flow around, you get a little bit more of an interesting storytelling thing and you just see kind of the, the thinner that's wet up here. That's, that's harmless. But if you're worried, you just wipe that out like that. We can try this. We'll see if the, we'll see if the pencils hold up underneath a little bit. I think they do. They're coming back. I was worried that I lost a little bit of that orangey rust on that hatch, but it's still there. So right here, this is this is from the last stream. All this all this uh, green work up in here. This is all watercolor pencil, and that little bit of rust and orange right there was all that came back. Nice. So you can see how quick and easy that goes with the oils. I mean, that's, that's you know, boom, done. I'll keep going though, but uh, let's get some questions. You out of here, take care, Sacrament. Thank you, here, man. Thanks for coming by. Uh, let's see, great stream on the real car. Yeah, I did okay. I feel like sometimes when I fight the camera, I feel like it kicks me out of my thing, but I, when I go back and watch the stream, it's fine. <laughs> the, the rain streaks came out really nice, though, actually. I was, I was happy with that, so. Um, you know, trying to replicate some of those effects from some of the other projects I've done too is, you know, when you get in the zone, when you get in the mode on a model, uh, I will say, uh, as the sun, as the sun's popping out too, I mean, the weather. Um, that's Portland for you in the fall. It was super dark, cloudy, and now it's like blue sky. Um, when you're in a zone on a project, like for real, real, it, it sometimes when I'm, if I'm trying to demo that per se and, and get back into that zone, it's not as easy as it looks sometimes where I'm like, shit, can I pull that off again? So you have to kind of get in the mode a little bit. So that kind of with the that's why I use that rail first because it kind of breaks the ice, if you will. Because uh, now I'm in the flow and things are going fine. And actually, I forgot to blend that out over here too. Hold on, because I'm anal. I don't like that. <laughs> so I put that around there. Get a little bit more on the blender. And that's the beauty of oils. If you forget something, say you do something, you forget these little rivets up in here. Come back in a little bit of thinner. See if it'll go. It actually dried. Okay, hold on. Let me get in. Fumble. Fumble! There we go. So oils give you a little bit of a little bit of a love right there. Look how I got that top of that river clear. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Let's get this kind of soften that up a little bit. So one of the things, um, actually that's pretty cool. I'm thinking of some stuff too. There's gonna be some future stuff in terms of painting. I've got some pieces picked out. Uh, we're gonna go hard on a watercolor pencil project with an oil OPR on top. And I really wanna capture, maybe not on a tank, maybe both. I'm, I'm, it'll be a robot, um, this kind of painter. It looks very illustration-like to me, like a watercolor illustration. I'm kind of digging where that what, what's going on with this. Uh, there's wheels turning. <laughs> there's wheels are turning. Um, but yeah. So oils are very forgiving. One of the things I like about oils is there's extreme forgiveness. Uh, the section can be anything in new minute middle, it's fully flaked ruin, super dry beef, the final drive and the tension wheel. What are we talking about? 2FS is off. Bryn, how are you, bud? I missed you there earlier. I want to say hello and good night. We'll talk soon. Uh, speaking of T34, there we go. How would you weather the bare steel on the wheels? The bare steel? Uh, you're going to want to get everything kind of done. Uh, and you're talking... You're talking this. You're talking that, correct? Is that uh, it's dry brief? Is that what, I'm, that what you're asking about? The the contact? Um, that's just old crap work on that. Uh, this is a probably a silver paint or a metallic paint. 
Um, this was painted years ago, but that's what, it's either gonna be a metallic paint or a graphite. Uh, as far as weathering it goes, what do you mean, like a rust of it? You know, rusting it up or anything like that? If, if it's freshly run and rolled, you just, I just use a little bit of graphite and hit that up um, right on top of the paint color and you'll get enough, of, you'll get enough of that look. Um, you'll be fine. If you, if you wanna, um, you know, use some metallic paint and then a little bit of thin like oil dust in that and kind of embed the, the dust into the thing, that would be another way. If you wanna rust it up, um, you know, maybe use a sponge or something, get little tiny little specks of rust on that, kind of like a surface rust on the, on the circular cylinder if it, if it hasn't moved in a while. Uh, and then full rust, you're gonna wanna paint that with like a rust paint, like an actual rust paint. So, um, but there's not a ton you're gonna wanna do to it or not wanna do to it anyway. You know I mean? Depends, again, this is all reference based. So if it's a running operational tank with steel contact patches, usually graphite's what we use. So like a pencil or something, or graphite powders, that will work too. Um, it's usually like one of the last things you'll do. It's up. It's up in that the, the final checklist before pre-flight is is hitting the graphites and all that stuff, the bare metal. Uh, that's that's how I would hand. That's how I would handle that anyway. Uh, Mechatrol would be nice. Um, robot would be cool. Pencil color scheme. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do another Mechatrol, but we can do a robot. Um, pencil color behaves like like an oil. It's totally cured. Yeah, I think it's I think it's kind. Of, whoops, don't want that blurred. Uh, my interpretation of the watercolor pencils is this is sans varnish. <laughs> so we've we put the watercolor pencil down on top of the acrylic paint um, and we've used it to a painterly effect versus like a drawn pencil effect and, and we'll do this here soon again. Uh, I can probably do the other part of the turret with that too. Um, and then we've put the oil paint right on top of that. Even though it's been three days, I, I did let the watercolor intentionally cure up. I, I don't know what kind of time length it has. Uh, I'll investigate more, of course, but at the same time, I kind of wanted to see what would happen with that. Uh, so let me let me keep going with the dust. We'll come back to the to El Turito, uh, but let's switch over to this guy uh, and continue on with this as well. Hopefully, this is kind of because what I'm trying to do is 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 kind of bring in. Uh, next level stuff like like in other words if, if you do like okay so so last stream we did the nose part here so now let's continue the dust up over into the to the whole top uh, we've got some previous dust work back here too uh, one thing I do like and this is kind of a nice comparison because it does sort of it's almost a validation of, of sorts so we've got a pigment dust work on the front nose here uh, and then you've got an oil dust work you know comparing the two here uh, I like the the color comparison contrast between a front dusty you know vehicle that would be in motion a lot to where the turret would block, and then you'd have residual dust up over here on the thing. And it does to me the balance here is fairly nice. I kind of like this. Uh, colors are slightly off a little bit. I would have tightened that up on my real project again. I was doing a demo here and a demo here, and I wasn't super paying attention to it. I would probably tighten up the colorways a little bit to match a little bit, and that's just adjusting the tones. Same thing with color mixing too. Uh, if it comes up to where you're concerned about that, you know, um, what I see here, just so, to, so you know what's in my head, I see a little bit more of a whiter gray dust here and I see more of a reddish tan dust here. I would have probably added a little bit more of a whitish gray dust to the light pigment mix before I started this part. And that way it, 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 it kind of, so this is the color here and you can see how the color of this color dust doesn't quite match that dust a little bit. So if I wanted it to be a little bit more matchy matchy, you go back in, you add it maybe a little bit more white, a little bit more of industrial gray, like a grayer dirt uh, into this mixture. Um, uh, Andy got a hole in one in the sixth hole in the tournament in Miami. Oh, all right. My boy texted me from Miami, just playing golf. He's got a hole in one. All right, go Andy. <laughs> he doesn't even know I'm on stream. Uh, my chef friend. Oops, get off camera. Okay. So he doesn't know I'm streaming. That is the downside of streaming with the phone is you will get all your text and phone calls. <laughs> Everything else will go through. Oh, I know what I wanted to do real quick. Um, besides close the blinds because the sun is killing me. Uh, so here, let me just show you real quick what I'm talking about. Uh, with the oil paints. Okay, so uh, before I go a little bit further, here, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so the, the differences in oil tube size and this is what I'm talking about. So this is this is the 12 mil, 12 milliliter King Art. Um, I don't know what that is in ounces. Uh, 0.4 fluid ounces, because uh, this is an American company, so they did put that there. So this is a, I just use the milliliter size. So 12 milliliter, 
This is a 20 milliliter, and then this big boy is the 37, which is 1.25 US fluid ounces. So 37 mil. This tube here is pushing 11 years old, and I, you can see <laughs> I still have almost two thirds full. This is 20 mil, this is olive green. I actually use this color quite a bit. Again, it's about the same. I've used about a third. I probably got this like, oh, maybe 2008, 2009. So it's slightly older. Again, just, it's a lot of oil paint. Uh, so that's why when we talk about the size of the thing, either the 12 milliliters will do just fine. <laughs> like no problems. That's why the value of that set, 24 tubes at like $20. It's like a dollar a tube of oil. Um, I meant to mention that last time when Michael Weiss was out there buying shit. So like, don't worry about that. I think you'd be totally cool. Like, in fact, I don't buy the 37s anymore. Like I wouldn't even, you know, save your money, get the, get the 20 or 12 if they have it. If they, I have an option for a smaller tube, grab it. You'll be fine for what we do. Uh, what else we got? Did I miss anything? Behaves like oil. Yep. So robot would be cool. Yep. We will. We will. We will. So basically the pencil will act as a tone and hue adjuster and the oils as a weathering agent. Uh, yeah, kind of more or less. That's one way to look at it. Um, it's kind of the watercolor pencil was kind of doing like like a post shading airbrush work as well the same conversation um, You know in the aircraft guys, it's the same, you know, the post coloring conversation of airbrush work and then um, You know the for example what I did was um, Mostly the greens of the base colors with the pencils and that's also because I don't have really good earth tones in my pencil set <laughs> So I switched the oils for the earth tones. So yeah, yeah, so Michael says, yeah, right now it's on sale for 17. That set of oil paints is on sale for $17. So for a good starter set, if you guys are new to oils and you don't have a lot, it's a great way to get all the colors and then you can pick and cherry pick out some weathering colors from some of the other companies as, as need to be. Um, but we'll switch to this in theory using oils and we'll, over water based ministry before. Yeah, the, the, basic th the basic theory, and I put this in a comment uh, to John's comment, um, last stream to the, and it, I have, thankfully we haven't seen any varnish crap today. <laughs> Just get there's a point where like I have to put my foot down with that in terms of like I'm not yelling or mad or anything But just the explanation of the process an acrylic paint job or a water-based paint job in this case That's what the watercolor pencil is that is in, almost impervious to a solvent based conversation of weathering with solvents on top That's why we do that. It's the most basic principles So if you're concerned or worried don't be if you're working with acrylics and water base as your base colors and then use solvents, oils and enamels as your weathering stuff on top. That's the basic one to one of how all of this works for all the hobby. Uh, and I don't know if it's ever, it's never really talked about, I guess, truth be told. Uh, we learned this years and years ago, <laughs> um, but that's why that all is, is because the acrylics are more or less impervious. Now, yeah, you can damage them with solvents and, and you can get carried away, but what we're talking about, how we're doing all that kind of stuff. I did put a pretty big, big explanation in the, in the comment stream of last time. Um, let me get my little eyeball cleaner. It's just out of reach. I need longer arms. Uh, yeah, pencils is a post shade for your graph. Light bulb, yep. Yeah, no, no, the pen pencils, they have, I'm starting to see they have a lot of value. I think they have some, some uh, more value than I thought. When I first saw them pitched to us by AK with what they did, I don't know if ammo has theirs or not. I don't pay attention to ammo. Um, well, when AK brought it out, they uh, it, it seemed more what I saw was mostly the aircraft guys doing like like the chipping of the wing roots and, and, and the edge of the leading edges of the planes or the propeller edges and stuff like that. So I'm like, well, when I get to that, I probably could use it or and or I know oils and other stuff will do the chipping fairly well, too. And then I saw some other videos where guys are literally like I didn't know that the pencils contained actual waxed up watercolor into a pencil tube. I wasn't thinking about that for whatever reason. I didn't pay enough attention because all my pencil teachings are with Prismacolors, drawing pencils. That's what I was going with. So the watercolor pencils are, are different. Uh, they're, they're just basically a dried up hardened paint in a pencil form that you apply with the pencil versus a brush. But then you saw with the brush, which we'll show later how you blend it out. So, okay, rant over. Same idea. El Pigmento. So those of you that wanted to see pigments over OPR type work, this is what happens. You can stand to see that that oil paint work with the stains there from, from before. Pigments tend to kill a lot of it, although you will get some layering going on here.
Now I know the turret's gonna cover up quite a bit of this, so I'm not super concerned. But this is mostly again just trying to show you what you could do. And this is being thorough because it, the dust will get trapped under the under things like a turret overhang for sure. And that's probably I forget what these two ports are on the T34, what those are what those are up for. I don't know if that's a fuel tank filler or not. I would guess maybe it is. You guys might know. It's been a while since that must be what that is. Because I'm looking for the other fuel tank fillers on the tin. It must be what that is. So that'll give us some staining um, cooperative measures. So again, stipple, stipple, stipple. That kind of gets it in the matte surface and beds that in a little bit. You get some loose dust. And this is the top of the Tiger One tank and Tank R1, same idea. Spit that down. money yeah, brush compressor kicked on yeah, so that little little spritz little spritz of love right there I'm out <laughs> what happened Actually, I think the autofocus works pretty. Yeah, see, the, it's almost like the phone has to recognize what the hell is going on. That was actually pretty, that's pretty quick. That's, there you go, that's what you want. There you go, okay. <laughs> Where was that for the 30 streams? That's what it should normally be doing with the focus. Like I shouldn't be, see, that's what it should do. It's kind of fun, <laughs> sorry. Got excited for a minute, guys. But anywho, no, that's that's money right there. That's that's one dust pass. Little pigments in there. Let's let's have some fun. Okay, hold on here. Okay, switching to oils. I'm gonna leave one pass on that because that came out nice. Did I miss any questions? Uh, don't forget to, to mash the like. Hit it, mash the like. Yeah, hit the like button, friends. Yeah, actually, there's been a nice, uh, uh, there's been a bump in YouTube lately. I've noticed there's, it's, it's, been, it's always been steady. We're always getting like a good 10 to 20 followers a day, but it's, it's bumped up a little bit. So, okay, straight in the pigments raw, like a dark brown kind of a fuel stain, semi-translucent. Let me, let me just zoom out a little bit for a minute. Don't yell at me. <laughs> Don't tell me to zoom in. Okay, hold on. I'm going to show you loading the brush up. Okay, for this stuff over here, got my dark colors over here, thinner. More, th it's, it's almost like a 50-50. It's not soaking wet, but it's not a lot of paint either. See, I'm kind of right there in, the, right there in that palette right there. It it's kind of looks clear. Like I'm looking for a fuel liquid, so fuel liquids are clearish with a slight tint to them. You know, you could probably even pull in. Let me see if I get this guy to flow. And okay, let's go with maybe a little bit more of a pinkish red fuel color here. Open that up a little bit. So kind of a, a this is a crimson red here. It's kind of a, a, a dark magenta with with the burnt umber is kind of a dark brown see that color right there it's a little bit like a reddish brown more of a pure red not a rust red but kind of a, a fuel red kind of a pink red a little bit just a hint coming in here onto the model over here stipple 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 just kind of stain it in that pigment dry you want the tide marks a little bit Work the palette, get a little bit more color. No more additional thinner, build up a little bit more color on that, a little bit more opacity right there. Work it around the corners, there's kind of a leak, a stain that would, feel, would flow. Okay, I can zoom back in a little bit for you guys. 
speckle, speckle, speckle come in here. Set that up. It's, it's drying pretty fast. So you got to kind of work fast. You're working with such thin quantities right now. Come back in, get more color. I'm just speckling really precisely over that stain that I put down. There's almost no color right now. I'm trying to keep it real translucent. Add a little bit more color on top of that first stain right there. Speckle, speckle. Speckling is going to be your friend with the top. So when you're looking at Tank Art 1 and the Tiger in particular, uh, the later part of that chapter, that's all what this is right here. See how that dries out just like that? So that's kind of a first round of stains for that. So what you just saw right there, um, quite a lovely little bit of fun of just kind of coming in with the dust, with the pigments, laying that down as a dry kind of um, element to it. And then uh, and then hitting that with the oil is kind of a fuel stain idea in here. You can even you can even get a little bit. I dropped that. That was the one I was using. Give me that. Same idea coming here. So I've got kind of a red brown. I'll poke my head up in two seconds. So I brace my hand. I get the tip kind of really close to the spot I'm going to start to streak at and just streak it down. I want translucent color for this. So you lay that down like that. Let's try this. Now I'm coming to punch it up a little bit more color. So that's your time. That's a fuel stain from two weeks ago. Got a little bit of the same colorway. It's a crimson red with the, with the burnt umber, kind of a dark red brown fuel color-ish. Come into the center. More color, more opacity. Kind of build that up a little bit like that. So now you've got three or four really, you got two really faded ones. You got kind of a middle faded one and you've got a fresh one right there. Now come down here, top of the fender, stipple that out, splay that out so it kind of drains around. I prefer kind of tapping that out versus capillary flowing out to get more of kind of a gritty look to that. And then you can kind of streak through like as it bleeds off in little cracks and crevices out. And that my friends is how you, as you go and build that little, I mean that's a little bonus. That's the bonus chapter right there for you guys. Boom, done. Uh, what's up, Mr. Korea dude? How are you, man? Uh, what do we got here? Two hands, don't forget the match light. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> Forgot to jump over and check the Facebook group. I didn't even know, is there really a face? Are you guys not joking? Like, is there, is there really one? <laughs> I'm not going, by the way. Yeah, avoid it like the plague, I hate Facebook. Um, that whole thing with the Walt Whistleblower just made me smile. And that fucking prick is out there on his yacht. Did you hear about all that too? He's such a dick, man. Zuckerberg is all about the coin. Um, do you have the hair dryer since 1875? That's a, that's a new one, man. That's not even old. Uh, Howard Laird, how are you, buddy? I hope you're all well and weathered. We are. So there's your little, you got your, your light dust up there in the T34. Um, you've got a fresh dust over here, just the thin. You can see, so what's happened there, so what we've done, when you, when you, when you pan back out now, so now you've got a pretty nice representation of this was if this was an actual project, which it could be. Uh, you've got your your frontal dust area here that we did you know last stream coming up here. Got a little bit of simple dust. It's gonna you know like I said the turret's gonna cover quite a bit of that, but you know you're gonna miss it. But you'll see it when you know when you get down and stuff like that. You'll see those those effects there. I know my boy Adam Wilder would love that one. <laughs> That's like his signature. But well, that's what I talk about with weathering time. You can see that there's four or five subtle little, and you start hyper-translucent, like a 10% like a 
of the oil paint and you build up a little bit more then you build up a, a, a more opaque one on top and that's how you build that up so you have if this is a, especially a fueling station on, on a tank like that you're going to have that look where you're going to have multiple uh, layers of, of dried fuel and, and, and fillers or whatever you know that whole thing so yeah then you got the dust correcting right there it actually came out pretty cool but that's actually starting to tie all in now. That's that's flowing fairly nicely, even though the colors are slightly different here. I'm okay. With, personally, I'm okay with it. I just kind of mentioned that because if you wanted to kind of tie in a little bit, you can do that too, or you can darken your oils up too. You can you can. It's probably almost easier to match the oils at some point in time too, if that was a thing. But I'm fine with that. I'm totally cool with with dust and dirt being you know the dust here being a little bit different because then you have you have this color up here too. And it plays a little bit different, but you can see the oil look slightly different to the pigment look. Uh, but I think it adds a little bit of interest. I, I like the look of that on a model, you know, kind of a thing. Oh, we out of time. We don't get a 340? I feel like we've been going a long time. Okay, let me switch up to, just because I want to show some other stuff. This turret still needs a new paint job, but, so what we have here, because I can keep this all in camera, so the goal here was a little bit to keep everything on camera with the palette and the, and the working demo model. So I do want to keep a little bit on that. So what we had here was, was an OD demo from way early on streams, but we've got um, that color up in there. That's all watercolor pencil. This was all watercolors here. Uh, that streak there was watercolor. The rust tone in there was watercolor. Um, there's a mix of oils and watercolors on top of this to kind of showcase how they work together. And that was kind of my first test demo Then I did the T34. So, but we're going to do a little bit more oil work on this guy too, because we've got some actual contrasty colors to play with. So I'll just leave it and work with it for now. Um, Curzon, Cur, uh, Kerno Zenko, how are you, buddy? Uh, quick question for anyone who joins sooner. Did you apply odorless thinner as a fixer X20A for the pigments? For the pigments, it's X20A. The odorless thinner is for the oil paints. Uh, would I kid? No, you don't kid, Jeff, at all. <laughs> Um, uh, what else? Um, can we see the hair dryer? A quick one? Oh, dude, it's, um, I don't, oh, it's, the model number's Conair. It's, that's, I'm sorry, I didn't even know what you, I just thought you were being funny. Um, yeah, Conair 1875, it's just the, it's like $10 in the U.S. at like a Target or a Walmart. Uh, you find, at least when I buy here in the States, I don't know what it's like internet, I assume it's similar internationally. Uh, when you go to your general stores, like a Target or a Walmart or something like that, You'll find all that stuff in in the hair section, the makeup and hair. The girls have it all. There's there's other hair dryers. I got the white because it matches my beautiful white table. <laughs> that's how anal I am, but that's fine. Yeah. All right, Paul. We'll see you, buddy. Thanks for swinging by. Uh, two hands. You're welcome to join. The, no, I won't. Just you know. <laughs> that's a no. That's a no no. Yeah, I'm all, I'm, not, I'm I'm good with with Facebook. And I think it's fine. You guys do it. Don't get me wrong. That's not how that goes. It's just I'm not. That's not. In, I've got enough on my plate. I'm not going to participate in Facebook groups. In fact, I think it was brought up a while back, and somebody asked me about that. Um, yeah, just so you're all aware, I don't join any Facebook groups or, or like any major pages per se. I, I just don't. In, 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 um, it's all through Instagram. If I do anything, it'll be on Instagram. It's nothing to do with being a chicken, my friend. It has everything to do with time, time management. It's ridiculous. Oh, what do we got? Yeah, I'm just not a fan of what Facebook's turned into. Not that I ever will. That's the pigment shit. I don't want to do that. Get out of here. Get out. Okay. So let's just get general stuff. I'm not going to worry about what I'm doing. Uh, what I want to show, though... Get a little bit more of the... Just a little bit. I do think that the, the 13 camera lens is, it still performs at a bigger distance, which is nice. I think that's what I'm seeing is that the distance from the 13 to the desk, the performance of the lens, like I'm seeing this, I see this really clear, which is, good, which is what I wanted to show more of the palette this time a little bit. So again, I've got my color brush here, a little bit of thinner right there, and they're all taped down. That doesn't move so that, that that way you can you can work get off the, the thing. Don't get in the color. Okay. I think I've got a nice setup there. And that's working. Yeah, you can see just just the color. There we go. <laughs> okay, let me 
can see just a little bit of the, of the cup of thinner up there. So there's a little bit of a rhythm to this. It's a little bit like a dance. So what I'm doing right now is just kind of, the, the, the wheels are turning. What am I gonna do here? The thinner in that, thinner out of that. The, the bristles are ready. So let's go with kind of a light green dust color. So I've got a little green up here. Again, if, you're, if your oils are drying, just, just cut them through with a little bit. And then you can you can use the brush and get the thinner in that until it starts to flow. See what you can see the flow. See how, see the colors coming out now. Um, so now it's just getting the color into the brush, and I'm gonna come over here to the tan, pull some of the tan over here. So now I've created kind of a really light tan color. Obviously, <laughs> let's knock it down a little gray. That desaturates it. So anytime you use a gray with something, you get you get kind of a desaturated colorway. So that's mixing color on the palette. I got a little, this was an olive green. Uh, and then I've got my tans and lights over here. All my, all, I kind of group them like this. This is actually a really dark olive green right here. Believe it or not, it's industrial earth. It's a beautiful, rich, dark tone, but just to show you. So there's some other greens. Uh, cause we have kind of a greenish yellow cause my base colors are this color. That's what I'm kind of doing right now. So I use the cardboard as my palette, the mixing palette show you what the brush looks like up close. So it's loaded with color and thinner. Now I'll zoom to the turret surface. So this is, I hope TJ you're still around. If, if not, I want you to, this is kind of what I want you to see too. That's how much, like I want, I want to show a confident application of color and I'm going around the details. I'm not going in the bolts. We're gonna kind of fade this paint color out a little bit. So it's a, it's a wet paint, but it's not the, it's not flowing out. Does that make sense? I don't know how to explain that too much, but um, go right back over all this work here. So it's a wet application, as you can kind of see. And if you remember that the same thing with the dusting before, I'm kind of tapping it out a little bit. But it's, but it's a fairly confident application of color in there. And then my other Jimmy Jam, where's my little dude? Why is he not out here? <laughs> so it's right in front of me. Duh, okay. So my old school stippler here and my little, this guy, my old rake. So I just dipped it in the thinner real quick. Okay, that's all set. You can see why I like it. You can see the matte surface, actually. You can see the texture in that. That's why you want that, because this is where you get the nice diffuse blending from. If this was a satin or a gloss, uh, you'd have a lot of trouble blending this out. So this is for like a little bit more of a broad area. So you can see how much thinner was down. See that, how you can kind of, you'll, that will dry to a tide mark. So you do have to be careful with that, but that's, as I start to tap this out a little bit, a little stipple tap. And that stippling allows some of the trans, transparency to, to play up a little bit where you get that kind of, that splotchiness, that little bit of a grittiness to everything. Clean the brush, wet it with thinner, dry it again real good. Just sometimes knock that edge down so it doesn't dry on you and leave a line. Pull all the way down to the edge there. I'm just tapping around that little uh, indented rivet thing there. So that's how you'd apply a, a heavy dose of oils to fade a section. And you can see the contrast. So you can see how the color contrast shifts when it goes over the dark tone, but over here, the color actually comes out quite nice. So get that down, stipple that out. So this would be kind of a, a faded, dusty tone in there. Hit that with that hair dryer.
So you can see now the kind of the, the results that you get from this kind of faded, dusty look here. So now I'm just taking the clean, thinner brush again. As it's dried now, I can kind of be a little bit more precise and come in and kind of clean up some spots a little bit. I can feel the tooth on the bristles of the of the matte paint. And I can I can scruff some of these edges a little bit even harder over here, just kind of clean that up. Because the crew is going to naturally clean that up anyway. So this is where I start to kind of develop out the looks. Get a little bit of kind of a fan brushed off look there, a little bit slightly directional, so you get a little bit of a just a subtle streak. And you don't want to get too streaky streaky with this. Leave the streaks for the more vertical parts like over here. Now this is oil and it's, it's drying pretty good, so it's, it's definitely got it. It's already kind of in there pretty nice. So that's step one. Back up, get some questions. Did I miss anything? Uh, like a blister, what? Uh, what do we got? Let me scroll up. Uh, in my squad watching calls for sure. Oh yeah, Mike. Yeah, I hope your, your shift's almost done, brother. RSP TikTok, yeah, not gonna happen. Unless you wanna see uh, a guy who can't dance dance. <laughs> We're good. Um, damn, my feet wasn't live. It wasn't live. Oh, you'll catch back up though, Mike. Uh, what do you got there, Drew? So the skin keeps the paint under moist, but you don't want to use it. That skin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he, the, the drying thing up there. Well, you can't use it because it, it, it doesn't even get on the brush. Um, uh, Wayne says after doing that, would you do some highlighting on there? Yeah, we're gonna keep going. Uh, Coley and Detlev, what's up, brother? How are you, man? Good night. Uh, yeah. Jeff, Jeff is two hands. Uh, would you do a wet? Okay, so Mike asked, would you do a wet application on the side of a turret and streak it upward to make uh, rain? You can, for sure. You you can definitely do that too. So you have options with that because because you, you you know I, where you're going with that is, is um we can do that right here for you. Is this the right brush? Put the oil right where I want it. You can see that's it's a nice wet application, but it's not bleeding out. So you're gonna want to practice that a little bit. You're gonna want to get that load that brush up and, and where's my other Jimmy Jam brush? I need to get another one here. Okay, this one should... I don't want to use the one I was using for pigments. That's why I have this cardboard down so I can also hold it by the way. Okay, so I've got a flat rake brush here. I put it, it's already got a little thinner and I was wiping it off. Pull the edges up just to get it kind of in place. Now I'm pulling top down. And if that happens, just get in there and clean that up. Anytime you just gotta keep it kind of. Probably going a little fast. So I'm showing you kind of high contrast so you can see it. You can also pre-wet the surface too a little bit. Switch brushes, kind of refine this a little bit. It 
See how I keep cleaning that off every time I get a little extra pulled up? Just come back, clean that off so that the tip of this is, is usually fairly clean. Oops. find that a little bit down so that's probably a little bit on the high contrast side but that shows you the technique you know what you're going to be doing it's probably a little powerful visually but again this is this is demo for for just effect it actually looks almost like a like a washed off whitewash almost but what I can do if I wanted to get fancy with this Dry that off. Oops, get, come on, get out of the way. Don't oh, get on the thingy. I'm jammed in here pretty good. Okay, so what you can do is switch colors here. Get my color brush. And you can come back in. Pulling in a darker color right now. Mixing up more of a, of a darker brown, just a hint of olive in that. And I very carefully come in here in the lower edges. A little bit of a dry brush along that bottom edge. So you get that slight moisture catch right at the bottom edge there. It's a slightly darker tone. And I'm using the side of the bristles. There, zoom in on that. So you see, see, I'm using the side of the bristles and just kind of kissing that. It's just a tap, tap right against that, and see how the brush kind of lays down a little bit of extra color over the lip of that right there. And you just use the shapes that you've already created is kind of where you're going with that. Come back to the blender brush, wiping it off pretty good, so there's almost no thinner. And then come in, you just kind of just slightly just kiss some of those that just in between those two colors. It's a little bit of a kiss of the bristle right there. Boom, boom, boom. Right at the edge of that darker color. That just kicks down that, that application line. Just slightly breaks that up a little bit. The bristles kind of splay that out. So kind of that's where you get that kind of transitional catch right in there. And then what you could do, my friend. It'll stay. I don't know if it'll will it stay. Here, I'll get the. Let's see and go back up. Okay, so I put a little bit more thinner on the on the on the dust color right there. That's what you can do. Speckle for effect, super tiny. See how gentle I speckle that. You see how close I get to the surface. It's just little specks of dust. It adds a little bit of a layer, texture, visual texture to it. And then for whatever reason, say, say for whatever reason, there's it's a little bit, maybe too much dust color up in here. So for example, this is this is a dark green base a little bit. So I've got my dark industrial earth color, which is kind of similar. And I'm going to punch a little olive green into that. Come in here. And you can kind of restore some of that colorway. So this layers some of the fresh base color with the oil paints back up on top. Kind of rebuild some of the lost color. Kind of 
get a little sporadic staining in there. I'm a mad scientist today, boys. Same idea. Take that darker color. I'll stick my head up in a second. Slightly off camera angle a little bit. You can speckle some of that dark oil that you just put on there as well. And this gives you that little bit of grit, gritty life to it. So it's not super perfect all the time. Gives you the little tiny little specks and stains. You can go right over the dust. So you can see you're getting kind of a really nice, interesting effect in there. A little bit of a color modulation, a little bit, but it is like dust down low. You can even see how it's even without even trying hard, uh, and I would shift the tones. I've got the pigment dust here from before transitioning over uh, into that, and you've kind of reset some of the darker edges up here a little bit too. It's still a little bit well. Let's try that off. And then I'll answer some more questions. <laughs> and we'll do some watercolor pencils. Yeah, so get out there. Yeah. That's actually got a little bit of, there's some nice stuff going on right in there. Like I'm looking inside of Sherman, I'm thinking, you know, just imagine this was a gray tone for Panzer Gray, you know, there's a, there's just Tiger too. it's a whole thing. But you can see how the embedded dust, uh, and you can go back and watch that stream, I forget the number on that, but we, we put the, the pigment dust and we dry brush in the cast texture uh, with, the, with the lacquer thinner to pull up the Tamiya paint. Whereas this process over here is a little bit different where it's, it's just applying paint on paint on paint to get the tones back a little bit. So what you could do, what you could do if you're just a nasty monster and you just ain't got nothing better to do with yourself, come over here, switch to your dry, brush, uh, dry brushing brush, a little flat rake. Let's just pull some straight dark olive drab paint. So I'm just dragging that bristle along that cast texture real gentle like. You can even do it down here on the edge too as well. Right over the dust. So there you start to you start to dry brush. So it's not quite as sharp as this look over here. And that's because the, the, the acrylic paints work a little bit different than the, the oils for this. I can get this, if I can get this really dry with some color. Try this, get in there, get, get, get. Let's get that brush loaded just right. You can actually use the acrylic paint for this too. You can go, or you know, you can go back to your paints if you want. Oops. And if you do a little boo-boo like that, it's no big deal because it's oil. So you can see there, start to build up that color there. And if that little mistake over there, come in with your blender and get over here. A little th fresh thinner. Just knock that down a little bit. Boom, done. Fixed. So that's also why another bonus, or it's not, it's, it's not something I've not talked about before, but another point to light to dark. Lay those dust, town, the dust tones down early, and then it leaves you room to, to dry brush the hot spots with the base color. And especially if, if you have a nice texture, or even a matte texture, you'll pick up just the, just the tops of that, of that paint texture. So, so you can see how I start to get that worn effect right there at that edge of the rangefinder. Same thing, keep building up that little bit of color on these edges here. 
same idea where I put that light oil down first, come back in with the dark base tone, just scruffy dry brushing. See how it starts to pick up that right in there? Now you're starting to get some love right there. You do all this with the OPR, all this with the palette. I mean, this is, you know, the potential is unlimited, to be honest with you. You kind of taking that top of that cylinder, just giving it a slot of salt. This is where you really start to build up the primo love. This is, this is the, like, you're looking for gold medal stuff. And this is the kind of things you want to start thinking about. You see all that you get that, now I start to pull up all that, that darker texture along that edge. Now I'm in the storytelling mode. My head's down, I'm in the zone. I'm not paying any attention to you guys whatsoever. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. I've got to do a Sherman. <laughs> it's been a minute. Uh, so yeah. So if you've done this kind of work where you've laid down this light tone here, same thing here, dry brush in. hit the top of these rivets. So the aircraft wane, you're out there. You can, even though this is a Dunkel Gub, you can come in. You start dry brushing your, your darker your darker tones of the base colors back onto this model. That's why we're getting those light colors down again to repeat, um, just to reinforce that concept. See so how I can come back in. And it's just building up light oil dark tones on that edge of that and I'm able to control that because that's going to be a spot where that that gets uh, worn off by the crew card. You know, they're going to slide on off. They're going to you probably use that as a they'll probably use that uh, periscope guard as a handhold to get up on the turret, even though the, the hatch isn't the hatch is missing. By the way, it looks like a panther hatch if you're from a Tiger II hatch. But see how he just hit that little spot right there? I mean, that is just dude, pure joy. I mean, dude, that's just money. So even though this color scheme is total bullshit, you can see I'm able to quickly kind of just deal with it. You know, just to kind of, you know, make whatever's there work with the oils. All right, what I missed? Um, it's unofficial just so we can talk. Oh, you guys are fine. No, I, don't, I totally get you, Jeff. Don't worry about that. Um, life is too short. It's going to be the <laughs> truth and death of us all. Okay, let me, ooh, lots of, lots of comments. Sorry, I missed a few. Okay, uh, what do we got? What did I miss? GC scale models, not too late. No, sir, you're not. Welcome, my friend. How are you? Good to see you here. We see each other on Facebook all the time. Uh, dig the flame cuts. Yep. This is a, again, by the way, this this will be reused. It's a um, E50 slash 75 turret from Paper Panzer. Uh, John, the, the owner of the company, also liar, I think is his last name. I apologize, John, if I butcher it. Um, this was handed to me as, a, as like a thank you gift because we were doing some stuff together. Um, in the Belgium Scale Model Club show in November 2018, maybe. Uh, and I use it as a demo piece for that show and some other stuff. Um, so this is all old work. We're going to strip this back down uh, and we will use it. We have the E-Fits. I talked about this way, like stream one or two, but we'll get back. We'll get back onto this as a real deal. I've got the all the stuff for it. I've got the barrel and everything for it, so it's fine. But uh, yeah, so let's do some pencils. Let's shift gears a little bit and do some more of that fun stuff. Uh, Sylvain, you're out of here. Okay, bud, you got it, man. Uh, about a few things. The kit of the Dragon 250, 265, Klein and Uh Should PM through Messenger. Thanks. Have a nice evening. Uh, well, I've got to go eat uh, before I get to the question. Next time I'm here, can I talk about a question about recent build all my books, storage, and it needs, uh, we'll need some information. Yeah, sure. Send me a message. We'll see if I don't know if I don't have 265 ref, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, is the 265 a half track? One of the versions of, or is it the recon tank? This is probably a small light tank of some form. I probably know what it is. I'm probably not connecting the dots. Uh, Wayne says he's got M3 Lee as his current project and have a few rivets to look after. Yeah, for sure. So again, the, the, the truth of the matter is if you have a lot of raised detail on your on your model, and this is what you see repeated through, even, even back to this guy with the pigments and even with, with the rail stuff and this stuff here, same concept is with the raised details on any model, Get the light dust down into the lower surface first. And then what you saw right here with the dry brushing, all that stuff is bring that dark tone of the base materials back out on the high spots afterward. And then that gives you that look where 
now you have appropriately all the dust embedded into the model, uh, into the cast surface, into the, in, in the surface of this thing, and then you, you bring it back out the darker tones. Uh, I find this to be a, a lot more successful process in terms of how do you recreate this look. Um, and I think that's kind of the key elements to this. It's, it's super easy. I mean, this is, this is it's a, I'm not kidding you. It was really joyful to do that uh, with that brush, super easy. Uh, and then my dry brushing brushes are just flat rakes. You know, it just happens to be the whatever I have. So that's the easy way. And pure paint, almost no thinner at all. And that's, and that's uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Doing some shit, my friends. We doing some shit today. Okay, what else we got? Pencils, pencils, pencils. I will need. For blending of the pencils, I recommend kind of a, a shorter rake brush, kind of a, a stronger bristle that kind of holds up a little bit for this process next. So we're gonna pull the oils out of the way. Pull some pencils over here. Yeah, I do think, I, from what I think, I think the, the lens definitely is, it shows a little bit more superior image, so that's good. Um, bring back that edge, it brings back all that depth too. Yep, I have an M3 lead, and how close can you zoom in on the side under, which, uh, hold on a sec, how close can you zoom in on the side under that viewport? That really shows the layers on the on the turret, turret, Toretto, on the Toretto. Let's see. I have to stick in the one the one X zoom. The two X zoom doesn't sharp focus. It won't do it from. You can see some of the air bubble pits in the resin that that weren't fixed or anything. So some of those little pits are from the resin. And some of the airbrush work didn't didn't wasn't tidy enough around the um, the rangefinder there, uh, and then I didn't blend that. Looks like I got a little bit. I think that's the oil from what I just did. This might be able to. I might be able to work that a little bit. It's too wet. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit more tidy. So you get a little dust catch on that lower, lower kind of vertical surface there. And then you get the dry brush hot spot there. And you've got, you can see here where I, where I pulled the, I pulled the dark and you go back and you can watch that where I pulled the dark olive drab color back through the dust uh, to get kind of that wash off look, uh, kind of reverse. You can kind of go either way with that. You can go kind of a really light calcium, you know, thing. But the thing with that is a lot of times with the really light color streaks, is uh, I find they're really powerful visually. So that was kind of a, like a way to give it that look without it being super uh, over the top. But yeah, that came out pretty nice. I'd be happy with this if this was like a real project. Up on the top, over the top there. And then you kind of see it more this way too. You're getting kind of a real deep color way up through here which is kind of nice too. Now, obviously, the, now this could be a two color camo. This could be a transitional thing. I would have airbrushed that a little better if it was. It wasn't trying to be. Uh, we're just trying to slap some olive drab down real fast. That's what we're doing on a demo. That's why it's kind of fuzzy up here. But again, the oil paint fade on that and just kind of dust and putting that down. I was trying to show just kind of an opaque, um, you know, confident, put that color down. Don't be, don't be scared of getting that color down in there. You know, punch that up. And then, and then fade that back out. And it's the same thing I, we did over here way back in an older stream to kind of show kind of an accumulated dust with a little bit of a darker tone in there. Yeah, cool, came out good, good stuff. Fun times. Okay, let's get my blenders. Let's pull in some pencils. Okay, watercolor pencils. It's kind of the same thing. It's kind of the bonus footage. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I got some yellow, some green, some brown, some grays. Don't really have a good tan color, like a like a beigey, you know, buttered tan color. It's kind of all off. Uh... Okay. Everybody good? Do the last push here. What are we? Four fifteen. What time do I start? One thirty. Yeah. Okay. Let me get this out of here because I don't want to be. Because I will. I'll, I'll leave that on there and I'll think I'm doing that. 
Okay, so I need my water. So just watercolor pencils are, are quite easy. Uh, this will be, if you missed this last stream. Um, So let's continue on with kind of this this look that we're creating here. And this is I'm just getting an experience with this myself. I might as well do it on stream with you guys. Yeah, I got I got a real nice clear crisp sharp picture out of it. Yeah, it looks good. I mean that you can see the texture of this of the vent dome up in here, um, all that stuff. This so I think from a camera point of view, from the lens of the 13 Pro, just uh, as a, as a webcam right now. Uh, well, hopefully we'll get some. Um, uh, some better web webcam apps that can take advantage of it, especially the, the zoom on the next lens. So there's three lenses on this guy. We're only using a uh, main one, but the, the big telephoto dude, the 77 just won't focus this close. Now it will focus this close normally, like a normal camera mode, like it will do that. But in the webcam app, something shifts. So let's work a little bit here. Hold on. Okay. So with a watercolor pencil, I can get this guy here too. So you just have a little bit of water. You dip the tip of the uh, of the pencil in the water. And then and then tap that on the towel, get that flowing a little bit. What the water activates the paint. To see how it starts to flow off there on the on the tip of that bristle, um, <laughs> the tip of that pencil. I'm in non-brush mode. So then you kind of just draw it. It's a, it's a little bit more of a, of a blunt process, but it's the same concept of you're, you're taking that like a brush with oil paint, same idea, and just kind of drawing it in where you want it. Just kind of wet the thing a little bit, a little bit more water. This controls the application. It's not making a mess. It's kind of putting the color in the, in the spots. And we're gonna blend it here in a second. So I'm kind of, I'm trying to fade the green here a little bit. So I'm using yellows and in, in like uh, bright greens. Again, take the tip of the pencil, put it in the water. Get that, it takes a second for the water to kind of activate the paint on the, on the pencil. I'm gonna kind of mix it right over the pale yellow. So I'm just kind of drawing it in a little bit. I'm just pretending this is kind of that real hyper faded Russian pale green color. So the yellows and the greens kind of play together. They'll blend, we'll blend them in a little bit. Come up on the, let me see, let me reverse that, get the yellow one again. We can go on the dome here too. I'm probably using it in a non-intended way for these to be used per se, but we'll just see how this goes. It looks like shit at first, don't trust me. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the blend part here too. Trying to get a little bit of that. You want, you're looking for a little bit of the, of the paint flow out of the pencil with the water. Kind of mix that up. And I'm doing this to kind of practice and learn myself because I've, I've got some projects coming up I want to play with. But because I have all these saturated color tones of all my pencils, because that pencil set's also King Art. That was a 72 piece set. I think right now it's on sale for less than $25 or something like that. So it's a great learner set. You know, the, the AK weathering sets are probably better colorways for us, but. Um, so that looks neon, but don't worry, hold on. <laughs> We're not done. So now, brush, water. So this is 100% non-toxic, uh, very travel friendly. Now we start stippling that. Just like, it's kind of like a in between a pigment and an oil paint. So I just tap that out, stipple that out. See how that diffuses out like that? It's beautiful. Okay, so come back in. Let's do this stronger. This might be too much up here, but that's okay. Which is good, because I want to see what too much is. I need to learn too, boys. Gotta got get my learner permit going here. Okay, that was a real juicy color app up here. And anytime the brush gets loaded up, just kind of wipe that out on the paper towel. 
I'm trying to, if you notice, so this is a circular dome. If you look at the bristles, I'm kind of splaying those in, in a radial pattern from in kind of as I, as I stipple that. So because there's a slight cast texture, you get this really nice embedded old faded paint into the into the crevices, if you will. It's a really nice effect. It's the same effect I did with the oils and the dust in terms of the last turret demo. So that, that other piece, same, same kind of similar concept. So right now I'm just kind of light to dark fading these colors in here. And it does seem to respond to the water really nicely. Like I can get all this scruffy pencil mark out of here into where it's almost a soft blend. So it does have a nice working time. It's not drying uncontrollably. And it does look way bright on camera. It's okay, I don't mind the look of it, to be honest with you. Because this is Russian armor, they do fade these really crazy kind of bright tones. And it dries to a dead matte finish, which is really nice. So it plays really well with all the matte mil military type stuff or, or you know model paint finishes. Yeah, you can kind of see you get a really good close up on this camera. So I'm just kind of stippling those two blends of that yellow and the green color up a little bit together. And then what I can do is you got to have a really nice dark green pencil here. Same idea, get that in the water, get that flowing pretty good. Resume the cam. So kind of fresh scuffs in the darker green. Kind of matches the 4BO a little bit. Definitely an interesting little medium, I'd give it that. Don't miss any questions. Thanks again, Neil. Uh, another great stream. Gotta go. You got it, Neil. Good to see you. Jayhook59, I like how you can just clean the water off if you don't like it. Yep. These are these are very friendly. These are very user friendly in terms of uh, either a good practice, if you it's good muscle memory practice, because it's the same exact application uh, brush style work as, as the oils and, and, the, and the pigments as well. You can see how I kind of knock that back down, and so see you can see how I get kind of that that same idea where you're pulling back up the darker lower color, uh, and this is kind of a, a faded paint conversation a little bit. And what I can do, let's see what do we got here. What is this? Take an orange, bright orange over here. Okay, let's see if this will work too. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of a light orange as, as a base rust tone. Actually, let me let me try a little bit of a the the burnt sienna first one. Kind of a mustardy yellow down first. Get that tip going there a little bit. Okay. like an oxidized rusty top here a little bit. Let's see how I can do this. So you can work the pencil dry or wet. I find that the, the paint transfer out of the pencil works a little bit when it's wetter. So the orange is a little bit more pop to it. Here with the rust effects, 
uh, I find it's just like the life color sets we used in earlier streams. Work all the yellows and oranges in first. So it's going to look a little too much right now because but we're going to we're going to kill some of this here in a sec. Yeah, this is super easy. A little bit of water, a couple pencils, a little a couple blending brushes. And if, the, and if the paint's not transferred, there's a little wax and you have to kind of break through the wax to kind of get the pencil to flow. There it goes. Definitely a unique look. It's a really kind of, like I said, it's got a kind of a hand drawn, you know, like you just get a hint of fresh oxidation with a little bit of that bronzy kind of steel polished worn off paint look right there with the faded paint. Not unhappy with that actually. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Drop a dish soap. Okay. I'll have to try that. Oops, it got a little juicy. Sometimes the tip falls apart. Just draw right back over that darker brown spot here. Let's put a little bit more paint in that side of that. It is a pretty cool look though. So now a little bit of the dark green back over that. So kind of layering the colors up to kind of kind of give a little bit of a, an interesting. trick to this though to get it to kind of look how we like it to look is the blending part with the brush with the brushes and what I found was the number two brushes the bristles are, are too soft for, for kind of the it needs to be a little bit more resilient or less flex in the bristles so I use, this, I use these smaller ones Zoom on that's pretty good when it's locked in. Oh, I never blended that out. <laughs> ah, that's so funny. Let's see if it'll work back in there. Yeah, you can see that I didn't blend that oil that I applied back in there. I got sidetracked by one of your questions, <laughs> whatever you guys asked me. Yeah, so that's kind of a nice, interesting painterly. And I'm intentionally imagining. Um, even though this is a T34, the ventilation cover on top is, uh, you know, the shoulder or the headpiece of like a suit of armor or something. Like I'm look, I'm thinking of other things as I do this as well. So this is really a dry run for me on certain kind of just laying, layering some colors down.
Yeah, that's kind of a, that's a definitely a unique. They're made to soak into paper, would not even try them in plastic. Uh, what are we talking about here? Anybody try to wear gouache paints? Oh, yeah, no, I, I had a whole gouache class in class, in school. I wasn't a fan of gouache. Um, yeah, I took oil paints and watercolor in my art classes, as my, as my electives. We had, you can do gouache, acrylic, oil paint, and watercolor. So I took oil paint and watercolor. Uh, and I was heavily influenced in my own personal art career, design career, was um, the watercolor paintings that you saw like in Road and Track Car Magazine and Car and Driver back in the 70s and 80s. There's a lot of artists that uh, did a lot of watercolor painting. Um, Ken Watterson, I want to say, is a name maybe that pops up. There's a couple heavy hitters that did some to do some real impressive stuff. So I was always looking to, to kind of learn how to do that with my own car illustration work. Yeah, that's pretty neat. That's That's, again, that was pretty simple straight up. Um, you know, coming in here, a little bit of some rusting up in there too. Uh, it's, it, it's, I, I like the fact that it works in kind of the illustration qu quality, but I'm not too sure about the hyper precision you can get. So it's, you know, I wouldn't use it as a sole replacement at this point. And maybe that's because these pencils maybe are a little bit more waxy and, and don't maybe perform as well as some of the other pencils. I don't know. I don't know, just a guess. But this is straight on top of the, of the paint. So, just scrubbing that in real nice. Again, I don't have all the precise colors for, for this kind of stuff, so I'm just kind of using what I have to kind of just play with it. And if, you, and if you're late to the stream too, we did a lot of early dust work on the, on the rail stuff. So there's a lot of stuff to go back and review in terms of kind of dusty rain streaks and stuff and, and whatever. Uh, we did some cool things. I did some cool things. This is just kind of bonus trying to play with these guys a little bit. So yeah, you can use it as a tinting process, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. You can layer it up over the other products a little bit. And then it's coming in with the with a little bit of a brush with some water and that kind of just softens and blends out that paint up in there. There's a little bit of wax in there that kind of that seems to be what's happening there where it blends in together. And it looks like you can you, you can go to town on the water and really knock it down. If yeah, you can almost wipe it off completely if you want to. Well in this in this stage. I haven't used this color, it's stone. I don't know what this color looks like. Kind of a dark gray color. Kind of desaturates that green a little bit. Kind of grays it out. black might be a little too much might be a little too strong let's come back in with the burnt umber mix in a little brown to the black there and then you can take the brush and blend this back up It's definitely got kind of a stylized look to it, if you will, if that makes sense. It's kind of cool. I probably don't have anything perfectly set up for kind of how you could really, really use them just yet. You know, they're probably more powerful than that, than this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's some things. There's some things you can do. Uh, let's see what else can you use. Guess it'll build up mud and textures back here. No one uh, Do I still have the car illustrations? Yeah, they're all digitized. I can share them later. 
Uh, Hugo, sorry if you answered this before. I had to attend a Zoom call for school. No worries. Uh, I'm new to OPR. Do I need all 1520s you recommend, or can I get by with less? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so if I if you're starting out, Hugo, um, like I like I've mentioned before, that little twenty dollars starter set gives you a lot of colors anyway. So I would recommend that from King Art description. Um, the products and listed it down below. Uh, and the King Art there, click the Show More. It'll drop down the thingy, and you can click on their thing, and then go for all their products. They're good stuff. Good stuff. Um, and then depending on what type of modeling you do, Hugo, I would recommend, you know, um, you're gonna need some dust colors, some earth tones, and then some grease and grime colors. Um, that paint set has everything but the dust colors, so you'll be okay with that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just build up. And then what I suggest too, is you build up over time, you know, buy a couple tubes of paint you know, every now and then. And sure enough, you'll be at a dozen to 15 colors before you know it, and they'll last forever. So you'll have plenty of uh, use out of them. Uh, designer gouache, yeah, it's all, yeah, I haven't done gouache painting in a long time. Um, I did marker and chalk mostly on my renderings. A lot of guys did gouache paintings and stuff. I didn't do that in school. Um, it's kind of an older technique. It's a really opaque te technique uh, of hand painting, uh, 2D illustration work, gouache painting. Um, I didn't like it per se. I didn't like the feel of it. I didn't, it didn't do kind of like my brain works, so I didn't really pursue gouache too much. Um, yeah, gouache has been around for centuries too. Uh, great stream again, Focus. You're welcome. Gonna run out and get a little bit. Yep, Chiefs to pull. Yep, yep. We got the night game. We got Chiefs. Uh, they block and play. Um, it's a good game setup. Browns? No, Browns are playing the Chargers. It's Chiefs. Who are the Chiefs? Who are they playing? Uh, anyway, uh, it looked like a good lineup tonight to, for tonight's game. And I haven't seen the afternoon scores. Hope all your teams are playing well. Any final questions here? 4:30. That's about three hours on. Uh, I've hit a good stopping point. Um, Real happy with that work there with the with the pencil. Uh, kind of just this is a teaching moment for myself, uh, and you can see the oil paint dust work on top of the pencil work from before previous stream. Um, you can see that you can definitely see how the camera color adjusts. But it's a powerful camera. So, just a couple tidbits on on the technology. If you guys aren't up to to pace on, I've actually put a lot of research into this lately. On the iPhone 12s. The 12 Pro and 12 Max use a high-end camera sensor. The 12 Mini that I had before did not. The 13s all have the same camera sensor now as the Pros and Max, so that's nice. So if you just get the 13, you'll have the same sensor. When I talk about camera photography, DSLR, that's the important part of the camera is the sensor because that means the image you get out of any of those cameras using that sensor technically is the same from a technical standpoint. The lenses and stuff alter all those things, but the quality of the image from the sensor is kind of the same. So that's why I got the Nikon D3100 because that sensor is used all across the five, three, five, and 7,000 cameras, all of them. And same thing with the 13. That's why this is kind of a big deal now if you're looking to upgrade your phone, if you're an Apple user or whatever. So this 13 Pro sensor is available across the board, which is fantastic because that's pretty nice. For camera raw with the overhead light, that's a, it's a little bit more punchy. It looks a little bit duller to me. It's a little, because of the lights, it's a little bit more intense. Um, it's, it's a little bit hyper overexposed, um, but that looks really good in person. So um, it's the colors are accurate. That's a that's kind of that limey color. Um, and then the lenses are about twice the size of the old, physically twice the size, so they're, they're potent. And I took some night shots out of the thing the other, the other day too with it, it's, it does some good stuff. So anyway, that's good. We're good on the technology. I'm real happy with that. I'm glad I did that. And it was cheap. It's 25 bucks a month. I was paying 30 before. So they're giving away deals. In the United States, if you're looking for an upgrade on the phone and your Apple user, I recommend jumping on the 13 bandwagon. Uh, it has a macro mode and the cinematic photography mode. It's really slick too with the film and with the video. Uh, I would suggest it. Yeah, if you're, if you're on the fence, if you're going around back and forth, I would suggest I, I like what Apple's done with that. Although I'm not a fan of some of the other shit they've been doing lately. But anyway, Carl Scale, nice work. What else we got, my friends? Anything, any final questions here? Uh, you're welcome, uh, Mr. Korea. That's all I'm calling you because I don't know your name, but uh, you're welcome. Yeah, that's, I'm trying to show you kind of the complete process. I'm trying to show you a little bit more brushwork today in particular. I've had some questions from guys learning the oils. Um, so hopefully that was helpful with the blending on the palette. That's, you know, kind of a whole thing. Uh, Bills. Bills, that's what they That's right. Bills Chiefs. That'll be a good football game. That'll be fun to watch tonight. I will relax. Mike, you're done with your shift, my friend. Go home and, and put your feet up. You've earned it. Um, mixing mediums on models. Yeah. I probably not going to, I mean, there's looking, looking ahead to the model making and, and painting and weathering and stuff. There's this uh, acrylic painting with a solvent based top coat of oils and stuff like that. I'm totally cool with that. The watercolors are kind of new. I think they, they pull in a really, 
Like I really love kind of the grittiness that I got out of that. That's pretty nice looking. So I'm cool. <laughs> There's a lot I could do with this. There's a lot right here. The, the wheels are turning my friends. Um, let's see. So today's Sunday. Um, probably be the last time for the T34. We'll see for, for a while. Um, and then another turret. We're going to start pulling in some new models this week. Uh, I do have a photography stream kind of getting lined up for you guys in terms of photographing models, kind of leading into what we're talking about. It's cool that I waited for this phone because we could use some of this too. Um, but I'm talking, you know, DSLR camera photos, we could do that and I can show you some Photoshop stuff that I use, kind of the process. Uh, so we'll get that with lights and, and backdrops and all that kind of stuff. And we do have aircraft coming, I do promise that. I've got the three kits lined up, uh, ready to go. So we're kind of uh, kind of getting started on that. It'll be a slow roll. There'll be a lot more painting coming up, airbrushing, chipping, hairspray chipping, uh, mission models, painting, stuff like that will be coming up. Um, <clears throat> so what else have we got? Uh, you guys are talking technical. I know more than you conversation. <laughs> uh, Omnipla, how are you? You're welcome. How you doing? Yeah, a couple Korean friends in here. Nice. Very cool. Uh, Hugh Howard says, always a pleasure. You're welcome. Uh, Fan Carella, you're welcome. Go Saints. Yep, you guys had a good game today. They uh, used uh, Camara quite nicely today. Uh, but I think Washington's a far away from being a halfway decent football team. I think they're missing a couple pieces, but they're good. Uh, Chris says he loves these awesome specific demos. We're almost ready to follow through the epic complete armor build. Almost, yeah, we're getting we're getting some pieces together where you guys can probably chunk this all out uh, in terms of putting together a full thing. Uh, I've kind of wanted to do that, Chris, where I was I was like I really wanted to to do a start to finish, which reminds me there's two new kits for that purpose, and there's two are in 70 second scale, which I think is going to be a smart play. Um, cause 70 second scale is about this size. It's perfect for camera work this close. Um, they're neat subjects. And then there's a 48 scale, um, and a small 35th scale model coming in. So I've got f lots of new armor pro plus the Cromwell for, for the desert stuff. Um, so we have plenty to work on for the next six months to it. We're, we're not going anywhere, boys and girls. We're, we're going to be here for a minute. Tons of stuff coming up, which is cool. So, but this, this is kind of... The first 30, 35 streams have been a lot of technique work for you guys as well, too. So that will be, um, Mike, doing the thinning, thinner chipping would be uh, better using X28 versus lacquer thinner. Um, what, what paints are you using, Mike, on that? Using Tamiya? You can do both. One's going to be a little less. I think this is Tamiya. Let me see. Let me see, my friend. Because you're my boy and you do good work for this community. Let's see. We can do a little five minutes of love for you. This brush will work pretty good. Um, okay, so real quick before we sign off, I believe this is to me a paint. I hope it is. It's been a long time since I painted this model. So if you're gonna do, Mike is asking in there, um, thinner chipping. So in the books I talk about a little bit, just real quick, this kind of a, just a little bonus footage. <laughs> this is a good thing to get the pencils out of the way. Yeah, we're, we're on board the pencil train. I like that, that's cool stuff. Cool beans. Okay, so if you're gonna do the thinner technique, you get an old flat shitty breaker, just use a brush that you're gonna destroy, don't worry about it. And even if it doesn't work, I'm just gonna show you how to do this. So you, I've got the, I've got the, I'm reusing the X20A. I'm pretty sure this is Tamiya. And I'm hoping there's a color underneath. <laughs> I have no idea. It's dry brushing with paint thinner. You might see some discoloration here. This it, It's a really interesting technique for a lot of different stuff. Now again, I'm, I'm going off the basis that this is to me a paint, I'm hoping. I think it is. So it does a bit of burnishing. See how it polishes the paint there? You're getting, well, not really. Yeah, let me get a little more aggressive with this. But So the trick is load the brush up with thinner, wipe it off. Get that out of there. I want to see if I can get some whatever's underneath. I don't know. There it goes. There is a little bit of color under there. There you go. Okay. So it's working. And, and again, what I'm doing is, I'll turn this sideways so you can see. So if, say your edge of whatever, Edge of Tomorrow. I was watching that last night. I like that movie. That's a good one, Edge of Tomorrow. Emily Blunt and Tom Cruise is an interesting mix. I would have never picked it, but it worked. Okay. So I'm using the side of the bristles and I'm dry brushing along the edge to catch those highlights. In this case, there's some rivets and flame cut edges to that uh, mantlet. 
and I'm just dry brushing left to right across those details and it's, and it's picking off those details, that top layer of paint. It also burnishes a little bit, so if that's a brown steel underneath, that'll turn into kind of a polished brown steel chip. Uh, and I talk about this in the books. There's a few projects that use this technique. Um, it's, it's less uh, radical than hairspray chipping, but it's also a little bit more precise for just kind of general edge work, early war stuff, maybe stuff that's newer armor that's not uh, beat up as much as a hairspray chipped. And get in here and get a little, little scruff monster. But the trick is you want this brush, see how it starts to polish that really good? So you get it, you know, this works, this is a great technique for Panzer Gray and Olive Drabs because they go down real matte and then you get those, see how you get those high polished spots like that? And it's how we it's how we did this over here, by the way, this is the same concept. Now, what he's wanting is to go through to another color. So what what's probably gonna happen is, is I think that's all, this is also Tamiya. I think the green is Tamiya, right guys? Now we do this with Tamiya. X20 is less caustic than the, um, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right, jerky. You're good. Yeah. So maybe you want to start, if you have the X20 mic, maybe start with that because it's a, it's a little easier to control um, if you're using the, the Tamiya paints. There you go. But that's kind of the chipping what we're talking about, just for you. But the trick is um, you dry brush it uh, and you want this, you want these really, and the drier this gets, you can kind of really take your time. Use It's like a liquid sanding paper. It's basically what it is. So hopefully that kind of wraps that up for you. A little extra love for you, man. All right, fellas. Anything else? Football? Yeah, well, lacquer thin is what I normally use. You just got to control it. Um, lacquer thinner is kind of the one that, that is kind of the universal one. But the X20, they both kind of work. And, and I've used the Vallejo paint thinner, like in the Tiger One model, that was all Vallejo and Life Color, so it's a latex paint conversation. I use the Vallejo brush cleaner for that one. I've used the Tamiya thinner for the Panzer IV DAC in the same book, same conversation. And then in this here, it works all basically kind of in the same context. Um, see y'all later, uh, everybody good. Uh, yeah, exactly. The X20 is just a little less powerful. Um, you're all welcome. Any final questions before we sign off? Everybody have a good night. Have a good week. Because it's Sunday. Tomorrow's week. I'm going to work tomorrow. Son of a bitch. Oh, oh. Anywho. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. I'm out of here. I'm going to go have dinner. You guys have a great night. Uh, good morning wherever you're at in the world. Uh, stay safe. Uh, Kyle Hilliam, cheers. You're welcome. Been, been stacking wood and just jump back into the front end. You have to watch the rest later. Oh, sweet. Sweet, sweet. Yep. Winter's coming. <laughs> going to be a cold one. All right, fellas, y'all have a good one. I'm out of here. Uh, we'll see you Wednesday.